pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And a roll call, please. Neil Outlet is absent, excused. David Newville? Present. Jennifer Sevigny? Present. Lynn Shane? Yes, ma'am. Jeff Penzine? Here. Jim Christopher? Here. And Jenny McKay? Here. Thank you. Um, first will be the approval of the minutes from the June 22nd meeting. Any comments or corrections? I make a motion we approve the minutes from the June 22nd meeting. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting minutes approved. Next is the approval of today's agenda. And we do have a couple of changes. Um, I'd like to remove under the public hearing B, the Rotten Manor. Take that off. That's not going to be on the agenda this evening. And then under uh, old and new business, I'd like to add C, a discussion on updating the ordinances. I make a motion that we accept the new agenda for this today's meeting. Second. I'll second it. Jenny seconds it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The uh, approval of this evening's agendas. We don't uh, have any communications or notices that we need to be aware of, Danielle. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, item eight any communications or notices that we need to be aware of nope. right. so um just because we have uh um, some new members when we do the public hearing we do a motion to enter into the public hearing and then we have our discussions regarding the items then we have a motion to close the hearing and we'll vote and close the hearing and then we will take action on whatever we need to, if, if anything. So, so we when we do the public hearing. So, in order to go into the public hearing, I'll accept the motion for. I make in. a motion. We open the public meeting on the discussion of the Groveland Township Master Plan. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So we are now into the public hearing regarding the Groveland Township Master Plan approval and then submission to the township board. So we've had this document for a long time. It's gone through many stages of development. I, I think we have a great product. I think, uh, Michelle, you did a fabulous job in taking this and bringing it all together with all the input from everyone. So um, I personally have gotten where it's difficult for me to read this yet another time. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I glanced through it. I, um, I've, I've read it many times. Um, I do have one question. Um, and it, it kind of is in the overlay too, but it does show up on a, a, a document. So on, on page 35, and I'll, I'll talk about this when, or I'll ask this question really when we get into the overlay. But the Dixie Highway overlay picture that you have, map six on page 35. I'm, I'm curious, what is, and it's up around uh, north of Trip Road, or I can't tell on this map, but that little notch out there on the far west or left side of the overlay district. I don't know what that is. Is it near where it's on the bottom? It's below that, yeah, below number one. That section that's it's not easier included. to see. Yeah, but the section that's not included. So I don't think I can answer that because these boundaries were drawn. Yeah, I, I, I think, you, right. But did yeah. you, yeah. Right here, There's a section right here. Why is it not included? Is that the trailer park or something that's up there? Uh, no, <laughs> no, that is the ORV park. And, and that, that's that's the backside of Mount Holly, and here that's the backside of Mount Holly. The rest of the ORB park till you get to Holdridge Road, 
and then I think that's a that's the, this part right here is like a piece of big sky drive maybe. But that's basically that is the remaining part of the ORV park that's still under lease to Leone uh, to take the remaining sand out before it gets turned over to the ORV park itself. So why would we not have that as part of the overlay? I, I mean, because- uh, I don't know other than it's part of the ORV park and now it's already sold to the state, so they already own it. So I don't, I, honestly, I don't know why, but I don't think it matters. There's nothing you can do with it anyway. It's, state of Michigan, so just letting Leone operate it to get the remaining uh, sand material out of there before she vacates. I, I think she has two years left. But I hope in future development that we hold for different things than everything. She doesn't actually own the it. State. The state of Michigan does, and they and and we rezoned all that stuff recreational for them because they don't want to buy property until it's zoned recreational. So there's there's nothing to be developed on it. The RV right, but to the extent that they do, if they put up ticket booths and the rest of it, I, I, I still think, you know, that should be part well, of the. Well, I don't have I mean, a problem. You can I mean, that's that's what that is. I don't yeah, know okay. why it was left like that. To yeah. be honest with you, yeah. I didn't catch it. But yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, I. I would recommend because you can always, as a planning commission, exempt somebody if they have a legitimate reason. But I think that whole corridor, it should be included. So yeah, then my request would be just for Daniel to send you those parcel numbers so that we can extend that overlay on these connections. Yeah, and then also I think that might be one big parcel. Yeah. Make it easy. That is not Uh, it's probably a typo and it should be PC, not RC. So Lynn is pointing to page 46 in your table of 21 of action plan. Yeah, table 21, table 21 on page 46. There's in the third row in the column of party. That would be rogue commission. Rogue commission, okay, because okay. it's not listed. Yeah, you don't have the responsible party listed up on top, okay. the RC. Okay. 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 Thanks, Lynn. <clears throat> Do we have other comments, questions? Did you have anything you wanted to add, Michelle? I do. Um, just to read into the record, we had followed the Michigan Planning and Enabling Act requirement to have this open for 63 days. In fact, we had it open much longer than that. Um, and during that time, we collect comments. Um, two of them are really just internal. I made a note that during that 60-day review period, we worked with um, Danielle and Bob to update the zoning map. There were a few parcels that had been rezoned, so we updated the map. Um, and secondly, uh, we're working on one property that we might change in the future land use map that's currently zoned um, local home, in manufactured home, and um, that may change to commercial, uh, part commercial part. Okay, yeah, so we'll have to figure out where to split that. So it's a very long shape. I have a drum. I think it's, you it's did. It's the old parcel that is next to the mobile home park up by the Renaissance Festival. It used to be owned by the mobile home park. Uh, Janelle in our office and her husband just bought it from the guy that still owned it. And it was scheduled to be potentially expansion for the mobile home park, which we ain't really done. Okay. So uh, when they had the opportunity to buy it because their house backs up to it, they bought it. And it, it's a real odd shaped piece of property between them, the mobile home park, and a piece of it wanders down and comes out on Dixie. So if you look at our master plan, what probably will end up happening is at some point, they'll take the hump that comes down on Dixie Highway and make that commercial like the rest of the stuff on Dixie. 
and then I think they're going to probably keep the bulk of that acreage attached to their house. And uh, as he said, he wants to ride his quad on it. So. It was some old RV park. It's old RV park. Yeah. yeah. Hunter or whatever. Okay. Um, and then we did receive one comment from the planning commissioner in Bristol Township, which I think was very good. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they want to read that as well, or if anyone has read it and has um, a question or comment about it. But um, essentially, she was talking about you know historical areas should be preserved or honored in some way, redeveloped. Um, she puts an example. It would be nice had the gas station been designed to look like a farm with other stage coach stops um, that had been there rather than. A the gas station. Um, there could be some signage indicating obstacles corners. So she's um, just commenting that there could be stronger language around historic preservation for, for redevelopment. And, and before you were our planner, that fellow that the county hired to do that tour of the Dixie Byway, that was one of their suggestions. And we had bantered around in the township at some point in time, probably getting those historical marker signs that you usually see are like brass mm -hmm. green background brass letters yeah. so we just haven't done any yet but that was an example of that particular spot that he had suggested and i think everybody was kind of receptive to it. we just haven't done it yet which is yes, in getting the old barn down right now which is coming down august the 10th which gas station was she referring to then no, she's on the corner prop kitty corner from the fire station okay What's now Alex's or something? Yeah. So, is there a, an action that we could add to the action plan around this? Or, I think we're taking care of sort of redevelopment with the Dixie Highway Commission, which is going to um, enforce standards that are you know, unified design and architectural standards that are, if not historical, at least, um, you know. Kind of rural in nature, we'll talk about later some more of those architectural styles, but um, we could, if we want to, we just have to record that we received this, we could add um, an action about, you know, just what the site is. I would recommend that we acknowledge that we received it, we make the statement that we agree with the concepts expressed within the letter and that we feel that we are addressing those as we develop our overlay district. Okay. Um, and other than that, really tonight is the public hearing. If you guys um, approve it at the commission, then it will go to the township board for final approval and then Thank you. Um, I, as I, I stated earlier, I think this incorporates a lot of what we're envisioning for development as we go along Dixie Highway. I think some of the specifics will be really captured in the overlay district document, which we're developing. Um, so this is this is kind of giving us the big vision, and then we'll get into some specifics as we talk about the overlay. The, um, and, and I'm okay with this and it's what we've discussed, but I just want to reiterate that while we identify M15 as a potential commercial district for the township, that section that lies within Groveland, we're really not addressing it in this master plan, you know, very lightly, we're not, but like when we get to the overlay district and other things, we really, it wasn't the focus of this. And that's not to say that, you know, five or seven years from now, if something comes up and you need to address it, you can, because we acknowledge in here that M15 will be, you know, a potential area. So if something comes up, it's not like we'll be without the tools to address it, but this really what turned in to be a focus on Dixie Highway. All right, no more comments or questions or corrections? Or... 
think we're ready to boot this over to the township and let them read it. <laughs> uh, can we close the public meeting? Yeah, we have to do that first. I make a motion we close the public meeting since there's second. nobody that wants to talk about <laughs> public hearing. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Public hearing is closed. And now if we can have a motion regarding the master plan. I make a motion that we send the master plan, Groveland Township master plan to the township board for approval. For, yeah, recommend. Recommend. Uh, thank you, David. A second? Second. David? We'll take a roll call vote on this, please. David Mubel? Yes. Yes. Jenny King? Yes. Jennifer Sevigny? Yes. Lynn Shane? Yes, ma'am. Jeff Benzine? Yes. Jim Christopher? Yes. Just like to say thank you very much to the board because this, due to unforeseen circumstances, the service took a lot longer. But thank you, Michelle, for sticking with it and uh, working through the issues because I think she's done a wonderful yes. job yes. on bringing it all together. And I finally feel we were where we anticipated it being. Just a couple of years a longer later. journey than we thought, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately, because of but, the events. Uh, yeah, it was all good intentions yes. along the way, you know, yes. just the way it's life. <laughs> No, he never goes unpunished. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, it's a, I think it's a great product and I'm it happy is. to pass it on to the township. Yeah. For and, and I think we had excellent input at the beginning yes. from the residents and everybody did a wonderful job on their, their product. Okay. All right, so now we are on to old and somewhat new business. Uh, we'll do the old business first, which is A, discuss the uh, Dixie overlay. So, um, as you and, and I have uh, several comments and questions, and, and assuming others will too. But uh, just kind of as a refresher, we did um, review this previously, and it was in a very preliminary stage. Kind of some of the stuff that Ben had put together from conversations long ago. And, so as we looked at it, we said, well, this really isn't really reflecting kind of the sense of what we wanted, which is more rural. I thought it was a, it showed a little bit more urban type of uh, development. We're looking for that rustic rural um, up north kind of feel. So I think Michelle did a nice job. She, um, and, and you can, Bob, you and Michelle can speak to this, but we had an example of Springfield Township's yes. document. I made the assumption, because at the beginning we had approached George, I, and Springfield all talked about this look for the Dixie Byway. And um, uh, Laura Monroe, the new supervisor, has been very active in their planning and background. So she has a lot of uh, history with the township. And what I was surprised is when I said, geez, they, I think they had the aspects that we were looking for. And I said, look, if it works, let's take it. I frankly would have thought everybody would have felt positive about that. Said it. And then she had a meeting with me the other day when we were talking about some fire department stuff and said, well, we really want just a piece of Springfield to look like that. And I said, well, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, you had some of the same things in there that we were looking for. So I called Michelle and I said, let, let, let's do this. She had a couple of phrases and one of them was prairie look. Oh, the architectural style is proximate style and prairie, the prairie style. Look. So I said, look, look, uh, take those two phrases out and use rustic or something. And, and then uh, she said, well, a bunch of the drawings in there were done by their planner and were proprietary, which I actually question. I don't think you can have proprietary drawings like that in a public document. And I don't remember any of them having trademarks on them. Oh, that's, they're definitely not trademark, but they paid a consultant to do it, and the consultant signed and hand them over to us. It doesn't have to, though. You can get them out of the public document. But nevertheless, I said, okay, take their drawings out. I said, I'm not going to tell the planning commission, though, that they can't aspire to those qualities that we were looking for in the master plan for the township just because we've assembled them there. So we too were looking for, you know, the, the, the beams, the stone, the kind of uh, architectural look that the, that the county planning department had done for us on the earlier renderings, if you remember. 
Mm -hmm. And so I said, I will tell them your concern. So I told you, and I talked to Jenny about this before, and I talked to Michelle about it, and she's made some corrections. And I, I think the gist of it is she said, if we take out their renderings, we need to decide if we want to put some more in, and there would be some extra cost for us in the master plan to try and get it. So I said, look, I leave this up to the planning commission. I certainly wouldn't try and tell you, you have to do it this way or not, but I want to make sure I relay the concern she had and that um, you decide whatever you want that you think is right for the township and I will support that 100%. So with that, I guess you can look at the, the text that, she, that Michelle sent you and if you think it needs additional drawings or if you think something needs to change, I certainly encourage you to. This, this document here, right? Yeah. Correct. You know, to, to decide what you want to do and I will try and support whatever you want, but I'm not here to tell you you can or can't use that. And I, I would say that was kind of the flavor of our discussion today. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Jim, I think I mentioned it at the board too, didn't I, the other day? And I, 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 I felt that was the same sense that we got from the board now. So with that, we've all been notified now. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it, you know, in, in general, and, and I would like to hear what everyone else thinks and has to say on it, but in general, my thought would be, you know, when we think of um, using the taxpayers' <clears throat> money in this community, I, I think one of the best ways to use that is to help ensure they have the environment they want to live in. And so... As we, we know that from the feedback we've had from the community, they want that up north rural, not overly built, you know, popul overly populated or crowded or dense area. And, and as we know that we're gonna get commercial development up and down Dixie, I think the best we can do for our residents is to try to make sure that that gets developed in a way that is conducive to what they've expressed. And that's through the architecture and the plantings and the traffic flow and the lighting. And, and so to help future boards, future developers, the more we can put into this document to try to develop that vision of what we're looking for. So, so that five years from now, if this board is entirely changed and it's all new people and they're like, I'm not really sure what they were thinking, we can at least document. So I would support having some additional renderings to help put together that vision of what we think um, we'd like in the up and down the Dixie Highway. So those are my thoughts. And, and I appreciate hearing what others think on that. We have a lot more to discuss on this, but just on the, should we really put more uh, renderings and sketches and photos and stuff in here to try to capture the design elements we're looking for, architectural features? Yeah. More stuff like this, right? Yes. I'm all, I'm all for that. I will support that. And I, I totally support that. And if the shell that falls on your shoulders, I don't care if they're color pictures or line sketches, but things with my understanding of architecture that I think would fit in reverse forward and back, uh, log construction, all of those things, as long as we have examples so that lay people can get in and understand, they're not going to understand our language, but they're going to understand the pictures. And the I think that's really bad. Yeah. I agree because when we look at the board now, I've been on it for almost 25 years, but yeah, you put me on in 96 or 95 when my mother died. And it, you need examples, not just words, but pictures that you can kind of see. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Because sometimes language changes. Excuse me. All right, so now I think take a different path. Is there any value of examples of things that we're going to ex summarily exclude? So the people say, you know, if you're thinking of a pre engineered steel building with a sheet metal, don't even think about it. That may be a value too. But yeah. things will change in society. So yeah. then that, they could revisit that. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that, change it. Yes. Yep. Like projecting signs are not permitted. What's a projecting sign? 
film projector. You know, you project oh, out on the right. Uh, I well, yeah, I mean, you would project. Yeah, I would it. just ask because this will be Michelle's <laughs> friend saying, you know, this would be extra because it wasn't in the original scope, and I'm all for supporting that. My sense, Jim is too. But uh, what we would need then, if that's what you want, is to have Danielle put that on the next township board to approve extra funding and. Michelle, if you can kind of swag the price range that you think it would take, so I said that. Yeah, so, and in response to what a projecting sign is, so this is just in addition to the zoning ordinance, right? So these are additional standards. So things like projecting sign, all of those are defined already in the ordinance. So the, the applicant's going to have to look at points to not write this stuff. Okay. okay. <clears throat> That little trademark and stand because <laughs> <laughs> I've already told George and Holly, he said, When you get your standards done, give them to me. I said, I'm Gladly, George, you can get them and copy the whole thing. I'm exactly, fine. yes, we're trying exactly. to get a consistent, yes, cohesive yeah. look all the way down that Dixie Byway. That's the assumption George and I started with. We could probably put a so, footnote that says, Also, refer to Springfield's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe not. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so yes, Jeff. Jenny, just a quick question, because you expressed, you know, the, the commission here acts as the will of the, the, the taxpayers in the township. But, um, and I'm going to ask some silly questions, because I'm very new, um, so I'm kind of understanding the, the evolution of the process. But as far as um, conceptualizing with the will of the taxpayers, how does this commission Go about understanding that. Is it this contact with constituents, or is there some? Do we resort back to the May of 2017? Uh, you know, meeting public, the, public meetings. There were a lot. Yeah. I mean, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that's five yeah. years, four years ago now. So. Yeah, that's is it. There, and, and that is unfortunate that that time frame is so long. It had right. not. We had not intended it, but through a variety of reasons um, that weren't, you know. Preventable. Um, it, it took that long, but it was, so primarily yes. Um, those are a big source of input, but also, you know, Bob having been in the community for decades, and several of us that have lived here for decades, we know it has been a consistent message. Mm -hmm. When people come to this meeting and they object to the growth along Dixie Highway, they say the magic words, we moved to a rural area, we want it to stay rural. So um, I, I have not seen any information to conflict with that. And even though the uh, meetings that we held were five years ago, I've not seen or heard anybody say, oh, our vision has changed. We'd like a urban area. I think development on Dixie Highway is inevitable. You see it coming north out of Springfield. It's heading our way. So I I support renderings. I think it's a wonderful idea, but you know, my curiosity goes to what is the will of the, the, the taxpayer in the township? What are they, you know, what is their design for for the uh, for the Dixie Highway over there? But if that work's already been done, I, I understand. I think we feel it has. <laughs> yeah. That great detail. Yeah. Wonderful. Can I give another example? There was a board meeting many years ago in Brandon Schools with the school, Brandon Township and Groveland Township, all three of them met. And one guy stood up from Brandon, yeah, well, I want, you know, M15, we need to make this manufacturer, we need to have people out here, we need to make the lot size a lot smaller and everything. Some guy from Groveland, and I think you were supervisor then, stood up and said, I moved to Groveland. Now, this was years ago when you were on the board. Of education and said no i moved to Groveland, so it would be a rural now this has got to be what 20 25 years ago i mean that's what it was then it, it still is if you look at it i i often tell people if you could get somebody aside and say what do you really want to have happen here and nobody was listening most of them would say i'd like to be the last guy that moved in pull up a drawbridge you yeah. know what i mean um and so what we've tried to do through the master plan process, and including this one, is to the greatest extent possible, take basically 90, 95% of the township and leave it exactly the way it is. 
the other part of it is we know you say there's going to be some growth on Dixie. We do not want it to look like water. So we want a higher standard, which is why we were attracted to the work that had already been done in Springfield. Um, and so the flip side of it is you have to have enough money to run the community. And um, it's hard to do it when your tax base is as small as ours and 25% of the townships owned by the state of Michigan. Right. Everybody likes the open space that's around us. But I tell people, if we had to run the township, on the money we get from the state of Michigan, about January the 5th, we have to lock the doors. There's just not enough of it to do anything with. So um, this is a way to try and preserve the value for everybody in their home, because where you and I live, you'll never know what's going on on Daisy, really. Mm -hmm. And and that's the four lane highway that's going through the through the uh, through the area. And, uh, and most of it's been old mining sites and uh, kind of dilapidated uh, commercial sites that sat there for years, like the Holly Power Sports before the uh, Allen and uh, Pam bought it. And so we think this is a great opportunity to take kind of underutilized poor sites, develop them with a fresh site, preserve the flavor of what we have here, and allow us to meet the financial needs long term of the township without destroying the quality of life for everybody. Because just like everybody else that moved out here, I moved out here because I want to have a neighbor six feet from my house. You know, when I bang a knuckle in my garage or in my car, <laughs> and I'm swearing she said, your neighbor's gonna hear, I don't care if I move my seven acres. <laughs> That's the only one that did that. Yeah, you know, you know, I mean that's 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 part of why we've lived out here, I think, and all of us. So I think this plan holds those same values and principles very well. And I think all those meetings we had at the Butzel Conference Center with, the, and there were a lot of people there and they were very open about what they wanted and didn't want. And, and I, honestly, I think this is as close to a home run hit as you can get with it. So you'll always get somebody that when something happens next door to them, they decide they maybe don't want it, you know? But I, I had the opportunity this past weekend meet the developer and the Eagle people, which is the whole DDQ, and the water department people on that PUD that we're doing on Dixie Highway. And, and I had a very good meeting with them. I questioned the value of Eagle because he didn't even know it was the stream that went through there, so the developer told him that. But there is a beautiful pond in the back of that property that they're committed to keeping intact. And the developer said, you know, instead of putting storage units in the back of that, I think I could fit 15 or 20 three bedroom condos back there, which as you all know, we don't have any place in Groveman right now for somebody that's lived here their whole life and says, I'm in my seventies. I really don't want to move out of the township, but there's no place that doesn't have acreage. So, and I don't want to take care of it. Right. That would give some people the opportunity to do it. And that is so far back off of Dixie. You only, you'll think you're up north at my cottage. I mean, it was just beautiful. I just said, I think if I clean this up here, there's a beaver that lives in the pond. But, but when you hear the whole story of how the pond got there, and that you kind of shake your head, I don't know how this happened. And, uh, this is the guy that bought the 40 acres behind where the log cabin is? Yeah. 39.5. 39.5. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, but way in the back, if you follow it back, we're mosquito guard. Uh, there is a beautiful pond that a beaver built. And I, I went there because some of those residents, if you recall, had come in and said, I feel afraid it's going to flood my house. And I kept on saying, I, I don't understand how this floods your house. The developer said the dam is just a makeshift homemade thing that nobody ever got a permit for. If you don't want it, I'll take it out, in which case the water levels will all drop. And he said, if you want it, I'll leave it in. I don't care. So what they came to the conclusion with the Evo folks is we want it at the level that it is right now today. And what happened is the guy that built it apparently was a duck hunter at some time. He took a bunch of cinder blocks and made it a makeshift dam on the uh, thread creek. And then he decided, I think the high spot ought to be right here. And he took a big piece of PVC like this and put it in there and said, that's where it's going to overflow. Uh, the part he didn't accommodate for is beavers like to plug up those holes. And, and, and that's kind of what they do for a living. So 
you know, you put it in and in the fall, it got plugged up and the guy that was worried about flooding was getting higher water levels because it was going well over the dam. And, and I said, yeah, but you know, don't they understand when you tell the beaver you take that out, he just goes right back the next day and builds it again, right? And he said, yeah, I know. So we want to do it only this time. They're going to have that developer put in a uh, concrete bunker that is going to be about uh, 12 feet wide. So a fire truck can get over it in case they put units in the back. Um, four feet high and eight feet across. And the reason for doing that is he said, now if we put that in, it's very hard for the beaver to plug up that bunker crossing. Okay. It's like what they use on Groveland Road where they went across from the stream. And he said, so we'll put that in. And even the developer said, yeah, I can keep that clean a lot easier. If I put a pipe, he just plugs it up in a day. So they are very much committed to preserving that, and leaving the beaver to live in the pond there. And it's a, actually, if you look at it, I have to admit, it's a very beautiful pond. So if he cleans up the stuff around it and built senior like condos back there, I think people will love to live there. Because you will not be bothered by Dixie Highway or anything else, and it would be beautiful. So I mean, I said I think that's a fantastic idea. I hope you do it. And he and his partner were kind of said, "I think that's what we do." And the other one, I don't know. Yeah, we need to do that. <laughs> so we'll see where it ends up. And and ironically, just so you know, that happens to be the developer that Steve Denoshi had called to try and take down the farm because we told him we're going to court if it doesn't come down. And he said, oh, that's why he was calling me. I never got back to him. I'll go talk to him right after we get done here on Friday, Bob, and I'll call you back. I'll take it down for him. And I got a text from him like a half hour later. I talked to Steve. We're all set. I'll have it down by August the 10th. And the next day, Steve Nanoshi called me from Florida and said, I talked to him. I said, yeah, you called me. We're all set. He said, it'll be down by August the 10th. So where's this barn near? The one on the corner across from the fire station that fell in. Range Hall. Yeah, that has station. been a, in, in fairness, we have tried about six different things. First, to preserve the barn. They were going to try and make it a, a vent barn. And, and then when the winter caved it in, and that was kind of hopeless, I tried to get the ORB people who wanted to use the wood for the ORB park features and said they tear it down. So I, I said, okay, great. He said, that's fine. Only four or five months go by and they didn't do anything. And so I said, what are you doing? He said, oh, we're just too busy. We can't do it. Forget it. So they said, another four or five months there. I tried to get it for a historical barn that they're moving in the village of Holly, but he didn't want to just give them the wood. So finally, when we said, look, I, I got to get it down. It's an eyesore. People complain. It's not safe. And neither is the little vegetable stand on Dixie where the roof is all like this. So I said, look, I said, if you don't, can't get somebody, I'll have the fire department burn it down for you. And we were all set to do that until I went to the meeting. And the guy said, I'll take care of it. It'll be gone a couple of weeks, I promise you. So it's a long story, but it's not like we haven't tried. We were hoping to preserve some of it if we could, but we can't, but it's finally going to be gone. And so the whole corner was a big pumpkin farm and whatnot, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably some been pumpkins sold? that come up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he sold it to the Noshi, the guy that owns Alex's, owns the pumpkin farm. Alex's gas station? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Steve Nanoshi, his family. So they haven't submitted anything or proposed anything, but I, I had questioned them. I said, if people complain about it and you're going to have to get that rezoned because it ain't a farm anymore. And I said, people are going to remember if you leave that ice there so they're too long and it could make it difficult. And he said, well, I'm not doing anything right now. I said, I said people will remember. <laughs> so we, we got to an agreement. Things are fine now. I'm confident the contractor wants to do the PUD. will take care of it because he's very bad. I promise you. I get back August the seventh. It'll be down by the tenth. So we'll see. Uh, based on that today, I canceled the court date. <laughs> I'm sorry to get sidetracked, but that, I hope that answers your question. If there are things you want to post, I, I want to just make a comment. Uh, maybe you two has the raw data. Uh, it's also on the appendix. Okay. You mean from the, the um, community engagement session? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. I haven't seen it in a couple of years. Cool. Yeah, because we had said we should keep it all together um, so that it, it, nothing more frustrating than five years from now when someone says, well, what did the community say? And you got to go hunt up that information. So and don't give us a thought. Yeah, don't give us a thought. <laughs> keep it all together. All right, so I do have um, 
questions and comments and, and I'll go through and then uh, I the way I would if there's a section I make a comment on and you have one also chime in then so we can do it and then if I don't have one on a section as we go through this and you do speak up that way we'll go through what kind of in an order I guess for I think it was in the packet. Um, there's a woman on our team who does these, these renderings and she had sent over what she thinks it will cost and how much time it yes. takes to do one. Mm -hmm. Those were not for this full page. Like if you look at Springfield Township, they have a few that are an entire page like this. Mm -hmm. We did not include those. We included kind of the smaller, like the fence detail or the so I guess as we're going through this, let me know if you want something like this. You know, this is a lot more work than the fence detail. Like yeah. a full page of the entire. Oh, like a conceptual. If you put it all together, here's what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, I think just the details of what a fence or lighting or pavers or you know. Okay. Um, I, I think that. So, um, on the first page and. Um, we talk about the design guidelines were created with the following following intentions. I would like to suggest that we put a bullet point in that said we also want to incorporate, you know, uh, green technologies where practical. I, I just want to make sure that and we've got, you know, in our ordinance and we can even refer, you know, we've got a section on the green and leads, you know, in our ordinance that we can refer them to. But I just want to, I want it to be a consideration. We're not, we're not going to force them to do it. But I'd like that to be a bullet point. And, and the green technology, you mean leads so um, in reference to the building, not necessarily landscaping. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, well, lighting also maybe, but, um, you know, if there's, but, I don't think you call that landscaping, but buildings and lighting. Um, and then the other thing, um, and this is really a question maybe to Bob and the others who remember this, but I know somehow we got onto this quilt, barn quilt <laughs> signature and stuff. I am not against it. I'm not for it. I'm as neutral as you can be. But I, I'm like, how did we get here with this? And, and is it something that we really want? A lady in, in the area and her husband do it. And I had never even heard of it, but after they presented it to the township board once, and they had a display out here with about 15 of them that they do, um, I started noticing some of the farms and stuff when I go up north actually have them. And that's when she said, well, there are people that actually make trips to parts of Michigan to see the different quilts that everybody does. And if you don't look for them, you never notice them. If you do, you kind of see them. And so my thought was, when we started out, we wanted to find a way to mark the Dixie Bible. Our first thought was, can't we put the red and white stripes that they used on all the poles out here? And, and that got into a whole discussion. With, I don't know, that might drop the pole. And a, a bunch, I think, hooey. And so then we said, well, maybe we could wrap them with something. And that takes another series of 10 million steps. So I thought, well, if we could at least promote the quilts, it could be an attraction for some people that like to see that and help tie that area together. And it is kind of in the country folksy part of it because most of the time they're done on barns and that. So we just bought the first two from the couple that did it. And they're quite, I think they're like 300 bucks in the stalls and all. Uh, that we put two on our own fire station and we have told the ORB park, when you get done and you come with your final site plan, I want a couple of them up there and one of them should be that red and white Dixie road marker because that's how I think we kind of build the identity. That's what we're doing. Okay. So it's not that I'm the wildest uh, supporters of it. I just think it's a good way to get some identity in another attraction. And if you recall, at one time we had talked with Independence about bringing the Iron Bell Trail, which I've never heard of since Snyder left, uh, up the side of Dixie because almost all of its state and county land, and it would have been easy to facilitate. That's the kind of thing people people to do that. I think. And so, because it's just not something I'm familiar with. I, I agree. It's a, a nice idea on how to have some uniqueness in the, the byway here. But 
seven, 10 years from now when we're not here and someone says, well, how do I get one of these? Or do I just make it up myself? I mean, how do we guide people? Um, this couple makes them for people very reasonably, but there's a lot of people that make them themselves. Ironically, our neighbors up north, Stone Joan, his wife made one, put it on her patch. So like I said, I never would have looked for it before. I said, oh, you put a quilt up there. And she said, yeah, I made it over the winter. I like doing it. So a lot of people didn't do it. Well, have you? Okay. I so, have them on my, um, they're, they're on, nice house, on my potting shed and yeah. on our barns. Okay. So it's a common thing and people yes. would know how to well, get you, one or do it. Your question though, do we need more specific guidelines for them? Yeah, it's mentioned here we like to build them, but we're not, we don't then follow up with, you know, if you have one, it has to be this size or it has to be on this part of the building. Well, I we think they're different sizes, size. aren't they? Like the one our neighbor has up on the cottage is much smaller than the ones we put up on the fire station. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't, I don't know that, I'm just suggesting from what I've seen, I don't know that there's a requirement to make them certain sizes. It's, it's the concept. In, they usually come in like two by two, four by four, eight yeah. by eight, mm -hmm. yeah. 16 by 16. And, and there's a whole set of patterns. The reason one of them that's on the fire station, one is the Dixie marker, the red and white one. And the other one is called the blue goose, I think, the blue and yellow one. And, and we kind of thought yeah, that's the one you need to put on the MSP post because they all call their squad cars blue gooses. <laughs> so that's kind of why we did it. And, and would this fall in under the concept of signage? Right. And I think it's more like, I would say it's more like decoration mm -hmm. signage. Decoration. So I would think on a site plan, you might look at a building and say, well, hey, it's a great building. We think you need one or two of those quilts on it. And this lady, there's, she showed us, there's whole books of them and what they call the different ones and kind of the historically what they represented. That's how we picked the red and white one and the blue goose one. So I, I, to answer your question, yeah. yes, I think we need more on this to define just that, that it's decoration. So maybe we put it in the architectural features or something. And just part of a site plan rather than a signage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just, gotcha. just somehow guide them a little bit more on um, if they're like me and they know nothing about this. <laughs> Well, neither did I. Yeah. Now we have an expert on the board. So. Well, yeah, there you go. Be careful what you say. <laughs> Bob, is this name Barn Quilts? Everybody knows what it is. So I can't put, say, I'm going to put a barn quilt on my house, which you can't see from the road, but I'm going to make it uh, eerie. I'm going to have guns and I'm going to make it icky. It normally isn't anything like that. I know, yeah. but. Somebody well, so can say like quilts, really, the way they're patterned out. Is it automatic that if you're saying a barn quilt, I can't put on M15 a big gross thing and say, well, that's my barn quilt? Well, I mean, is it? Is it? Yes, that's where. If they fall under signage, we're not allowed to tell people legally what. If they want to have two flaming guns on the side of the barn, they can't. Get it. Okay. Okay. I mean, we can't. We're not allowed to control the content of their signs. That's freedom of speech. Tell them where they can put it, how big it can be, but we can't say we think that's unfair, just tasteful. Okay. Can you, but if they're quilts, could you put language in there that might say commonly accepted designs and sizes used for these quilts? Yeah. yeah we can you said they're yeah. fairly standard, and I know there's books, the patterns, and there's a lot of patterns. Yeah, because the, and, and I think the distinction is if we don't have it as signage, then we're, we're not under that First Amendment regulation. If we have it as decorations, like landscaping, we can say, well, this isn't the type of decorations we wanted along the Dixie Highway. Yeah. Yes, and so I am gonna have to refer to your definition of a sign because I know that sometimes murals will fall under a sign and then people that get into some territory. So okay. So I'll check that um, out, but I will, as much as possible, I'll try to put it under the architectural features section and say these are the desired sizes. Um, I might need help on that too, but that this is all new to me. So if you guys know the woman who does it or the common sizes, if you can send me a It's a Hispanic yeah. name. I think her name is Sanchez. Well, would you feel comfortable working with as far as? Yeah. If you call Pam, you should probably find out who you made the checks with. <laughs> 
Well, Jenny familiar. can, Jenny's Jenny. familiar. Yeah, Jenny's familiar. All right. Sanchez spelled MC. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else on that section? And then the page two was uh, the cutout for the ORB park and yeah. the overlay, just to do that. All right. So page three, dimensional and use standards. I have, you know, a lot of questions here. So in our um, section, in our ordinance, in section uh, 54506, we have the schedule of regulations, which is also exhibit A under updating our <laughs> um, but we talked about one of the things in Dixie Highway to help us address density is to have some lot sizes. And, and so the first bullet here, the minimum lot size in the overlay district is two and a half acres with a minimum front setback of 25 feet. Is that your, what you're using to say that's how we're going to try to address the density? Yes. So I, when I look at the schedule of regulations, this Dixie Highway, again, because this is an overlay, the base zone is what people will have to follow unless we tell them otherwise in Dixie Highway. And in the schedule of regulations, I could have been to, uh, I, have the, I have it up here. You know, there are minimum Exactly. So, um, in order, and we can take them away if we want to, um, but that just means that someone could have an acre. And I, from what I gathered from our last conversation, is we wanted larger parcels. So they can be bigger if we think 2.5 is too small. Um, I mean, those are the same as there are some REF on Dixie Highway as well. So that would be a form of that. So, yeah, I. I we can have that more substantive discussion. I'm right now still looking a little bit at just logistics. So, so your first bullet point was the attempt to address our comments of we want to have less density and doing that through the size. And then, you know, as we get, uh, and this is where for the planning commission, I want to have a, a good understanding of how we're going to use this overlay district. Your last bullet point in that same section of dimensional new standard says, unless otherwise stated, the standards of the underlying base zone district apply. So you start out saying, well, we're gonna have a, and that's where I got confused. We're gonna have a minimum two and a half. I think we should describe that all parcels getting developed will have to have a minimum of two and a half. Cause I, I got confused when we went and said, unless otherwise stated, because we're going to have a multitude of zoning, right? We're going to have maybe a, a, a business and a, the plan development, and we're going to have a B1 or a, you know different things. So it, it was confusing to me when we say the underlying base. So I'd look and I'd say, well, I'm going to do a B1, and there's no requirement, you know. So so I, I was ambiguous to me, and I, and I think we should be clear if, if we're saying in order. To, and I think we just say it that simply. In order to maintain, you know, the the, the rural uh, spacious environment, you know, as we do the development, we'll have a minimum of two and a half. It's the use, I think, of the, the, the not the size, right? It's the use of the underlying zoning districts that are going to apply, right? Not this. We're saying no, not the size. Saying, so the way that it works is. You know, all of the setbacks, I mean, that's why I changed them here because otherwise your base zone is what applies and then this is additional standards on top. So like the setbacks, you know, the size of the acre, that is all based on the base zone. So unless we say otherwise, which we do. Yeah, but you, so, but, and that's where I'm confused. Are you saying within this whole district, it's going to be a minimum of two and a half acres and a minimum front setback of 25 feet. Yeah. That whole shaded area on the map. Right. 
And then any other of the specifics, such as side yard and back, then I go into the underlying zone. Unless, unless we want to make them more specific. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, it's kind of a catch all, you know, it's like, here are standards if something's unclear, you know. So I think it says elsewhere, and, and I'll make this clear if it, if it needs to be. I think it says, like, if there's two things that conflict between the base zone and this overlay zone, the overlay zone will take precedent. And that's just a catch all in case we can't remember every single tiny little detail. Yes. So I think that's. Yes. Yeah, but I think stating that up front. Yeah, when we, yeah, well, when we talk about the guidelines were created with the following intentions, you know, put it put that catch all in there. Okay. And then um, I I'm I'm great, and I'll let other members comment. I'm great with the two and a half minimum acres minimum. I mean, we do that for the residential, and I think doing that for businesses. I'd yeah, like more, but, but it's a good way to make sure they're not jam packed in there. Yeah, you know, because um, we know a lot of people as they develop their mm -hmm. land along Dixie want to parcel it into these little, you know, 500 by 200, you know, here, put a little shop on that. And we don't want that. Oh, but to, to the same extent, the guy doing the PUD said he put some kind of retail in front. He's going to have multiple outlets in there. He's got the whole zoning. He's got the 39.55 acres or whatever it is, right? Um, so I think he'd be covered by that. Okay, good. You wouldn't. He has forty acres. Yeah. He, um, you wouldn't. You wouldn't make each one of those businesses in the front two and a half acres, would you? Because I don't think he's envisioning that. No. He kind of has it set up where. For the PUD. Yeah. It the, doesn't have to be. Yeah. Yeah. The retail is in the front. Then there's the green belt. The hide the storage uh, rental units behind it, and then possibly the. Things on the other side of the pond. But what do you, I, I don't remember what his frontage is, but you know, let's say it's pretty, pretty long. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but I, the hypothetical, if you wanted to develop that frontage and you wanted to put six buildings there, six businesses, mm -hmm. different buildings, would we want to start regulating that? I mean, he could get to the Maybe not him, but he sells and you'd get somebody else. They could say, hey, look at this frontage. I can cram a whole bunch of little buildings here. Yeah, I, I think he is I think he is envisioning though putting something there that they would make size units available for wherever whatever they were putting in there, I guess. I, I know I don't think we ever really talked about it in the meeting. I know, I know. And 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 I'm saying right now, when we talk about how we want to space things out, yeah, he's got a 40 acre parcel, but you know, we've seen several people talk about, well, I want to split off the first 200 feet, you know, and I've got 500 feet on Dixie, and I'll take the first 200 and I'll split it up and I'll put a bunch of little businesses there and we're right back to Waterford, you know, type. Things. Except you still have control over what the facades and buildings look like, because as the overlay district, that's where you get to put all the other requirements in there about what you want. Yeah, but we don't want the density. Yeah. Well, Whether it looks okay, nice I, or not, yeah. we don't want the density. I, I understand, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know I don't know what the economics of the development are if you do that. I, 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 I mean, if you know. did, and, and, and you know, for him, and I don't know either. I'm throwing, I'm just yeah, throwing no, stuff up out, out there to. I mean, I have the language up right here. So you guys do have, the thing about PUDs is because they're trying to encourage, you know, innovative development, the language is all very vague. And a lot of it comes out when you create a development agreement. Um, but you do have written here it is further the intent of the PD district to encourage quality design innovation by minimizing certain building heights, building bulk, density, and area requirements, only narrowly associated with conventional zone districts. Um, and I do believe there was some other language in here. I'd have to read it more closely, but um, you guys do have some language protecting you from it being super dense, and you can write that up in the development. So that, that PUD gives them the latitude on an individual project, if I understand it correctly, to be pretty flexible on what they, the applicant might propose and what they might decide that's either what we want or not what we want and, and, and make a change because ultimately he or she has to comply with what they decide, right? 
Um, yeah, but I mean, you do have all of these intentions listed, so you can't, you don't have total discretion. You well, don't have yeah. all these, but these are right. broadly written so that um, you can somewhat negotiate with them on that. And, and so just to keep playing out the hypothetical then, so he's got 39.6 <coughs> acres, and we could say that this would require, I don't know, I'm wondering, could we say, well, if you're going to develop that front Dixie Highway frontage, it has to be a minimum of two and a half acres that you use there in developing that. I don't know if that language, this language here two would and actually. Half one unit or two and a half? For the whole thing. Front. For the whole thing. Oh. I think. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think we would, I don't, depending on what he came with, I don't think yeah. we'd say you have to do two and a half acres for every business. You could have one large building with several businesses in it, yeah. you know, but, but and, say, and that I don't know, because I will say this, all of my discussions with them, they seem to be pretty much firstly people from the meetings we had. Yeah, right. And what I had on um, Friday there with the other but, folks, they're, I think, very cognizant of what they're trying to do. But we might not get, as we same. progress the same level and caliber of developers. But so I'm I'm just trying to think through and I'm saying if if we had another scenario with somebody that wasn't as reputable as this gentleman, um I, I would I would look to this and say you gotta have whatever you if you put one building with several businesses in it or you put a couple of detached buildings, you gotta have a minimum of two and a half acres. Okay, so one way that this is commonly regulated, and I'm going to look here at your schedule of regulations if you have in front of you. Okay. That, um, you have um, maximum per percent lot coverage. Yes. So if you're if you are worried about density, you know, and of course this doesn't exactly get to your you know along the frontage question, but it's very common you can see some of your zones have them and some of them don't. But if you wanted to add in the UC highway overlay, you know, you can only develop on 50% of the parcel, that would sort of reduce their. Yeah, energy. I like that idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because well, is that like doing a cluster housing option where, in the case of that parcel there, the wetlands, the pond, and all of that part's not per se developed, right? Because there are wetlands on that property, part of that 40 acres you can't build on. That's the whole reason the Eagle people were out there. You know, these are good weeds or vegetation. I mean, you can't do that. And this other one's bad, but you still can't do it. Um, so, what's the question? Well, in a cluster housing option, yeah. when they have the density calculated, it takes the entire acreage of the property. And if there happens to be a lake on that property, that lake counts as part of the open undeveloped space. In this case of the PUD, if you took, I, I don't know how it works out, I don't think it's 50%, but a good piece of that property is the pond and the wetland area around it. If you take that out of it, it's still part of the acreage to come up with only using 50%. I just don't know 50 I'm asking. I, I know, know. I know. I don't know. Fifty percent is the right number. On right. That. I don't know either. I'm just saying that we can add a percentage if we're worried about density. That's yeah. one common way to regulate it. So I'd have to think about the number. Yeah. That'd be um, an interesting one to look at because if I had to guess, just from looking at the drawings that we have, I don't think fifty percent of it's undeveloped. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's 25, 30, or maybe a little more, just because the wetland yeah. parts. Yeah. And I think that. You know, while we might in a, um, we don't have anything like in B1, B2, you know, as far as that, which to me is more likely that 50% where someone's going to be in a B1 neighborhood business and we say, like, you can't, you know, you got to have a minimum two and a half acres, you can't overbuild on it um, between parks and lots and stuff. Perfect. But a PD actually is a little different and, you, and because you want mixed development on that and that's exactly what he's doing whether he has you know some condos for seniors in the rear or some you know those storage buildings in the center and maybe some retail up in front and and so i you know saying well 50 percent of the land you can't use i don't know that that's necessarily the right way to go there but i just um i want to have some tools to address density as we build up 
on Dixie. You want Avenue. something that's more, <clears throat> more a tool on an individual case basis. When somebody comes up with a PUD, you could look at one and say, well, this one, this needs to be that type of here. use. Yeah. This, this one needs to be 30% undeveloped, and you can get that <laughs> because you got wetlands or whatever. This other one, that might need to be 50 because there's more sensitive areas, and another one might be 25 or something. You just want a, a tool that makes that part of the calculation when you're doing a site plan on a PUD. Um, you can exclude PUDs from this, I think. Because uh, you can control them anyway by the what you get done. Right? Yeah. The only other constriction that he seems to have is um, the Eagle had to agree what was surveyed was wetlands that couldn't be touched, and there was a dis the, there was some discussion on two little tiny spots that they said it's too far away from the other one it's too small we don't care what happens on those it was the big area where the pond and the stream went through that they didn't want anything done so but i bob i don't i don't know what tools we would have right now so if we did the pud and we excluded it from this and this same developer came in and said, here's what I want to do. And we said, well, oh, that's too much on that property. You know, you, you've got too many things going on, too many buildings. Um, where would I point to, to say that he couldn't do that? We don't, you know, other than the setbacks, you know, that are listed in the schedule, right? Yeah. We don't have density in any of the districts. You know, so I, I don't know what tool we'd have to say, you can't build that much on that property. Yeah, all you have is- I understand what you want, I don't know how to get there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can look into that. I mean, generally it's still percent lot coverage. So it's yeah. only 50% of your net. But if you guys wanted to do that one-off property by property, you know, that becomes more challenging because you have to come up with criteria. Like, what are we gonna base this on? Let's. What In fairness to the de developer or purchaser, they got to have some idea when they're buying the property what they actually think they can use on it, I guess. But, you know, we could we could use soft language, right? We could say the intent of these guidelines is to reduce density and growth. And so um, you'll be limited to 50% lot coverage unless agreed to otherwise oh. by the PC. Oh, that's an interesting. So you say you got to start here, but you don't, you know, you can. My son's got the same thing on Atlas where he bought that property on M15. He did? He's had it clear. He actually owns a much bigger piece of acreage, but a lot of it's in a floodplain. And so he knows he can't touch that, but the part that he can use, he had cleared the other day. And it's pretty good size, but I mean, that same thing happens. He never could use all of his acreage because it goes all the way to the next guy and it's a long way off but it's all basically wet and stuff right up by m15 and on soldier or the main building i don't know if they have anything on it he just tried to maintain their setback and their setbacks were huge it, it, it's almost hard to get a building that he bought all three lots it's almost hard to get a building on there and meet their setbacks on that piece of property and he bought all three of them I'm happy to add that language. You okay with that? It, it, yeah, if you guys are okay with that, I would still say if it if there's going to be a little disclaimer that says like, you know, 50 percent except for the PC's discretion, you might still want again if it's not your board, if it's someone else, like, and they're like, well, we're supposed to base this on whether we have votes or not. I don't know. You might want to have a few bullet points, but we don't have to. I think well. I I, uh, I understand and agree, but for now, I think if we say in an effort to control density, okay. with density being the operative term, and each parcel is going to be different, you're going to have unbuildable land, and you know, and that may add the spaciousness you want just because they can't build that section up, whatever. But okay, I'll add that to the And then, um, still on the same section, <laughs> we're not moving <laughs> along too fast, but um, 
I struggle with the 25 feet front setback. I, I just think that's so close. I, I was thinking we were gonna require, you know, more green space. And because when we say setback, that's that could be their park. Well, we're not gonna have parking in front, but I mean, that, that could be their building, right? 25 feet from, yeah, no, that's, uh, I, I just think that's too close. Okay, well, whatever you guys feel comfortable with, I mean, there isn't anything to go up because if you want to do three jobs. I know. Have any, so I took the ones from um, REF, since those are also on the highway. Um, but if you flip it back, it's just, um, you know, continuity, although they can put it much further back. I mean, they can put it 500 feet back if they want, the minimum. So if you're using an REF that front yard setback is usually 50 feet on top of the road right away. Like I'm on Brooklyn Road. The road right away is 60 feet from the middle of the road yeah, into my property, well into my property, and then 50 feet. So my house had to actually be at least 110 feet from the road. Okay. I think I, I think 50 feet. I agree. Yeah, so with the schedule of regulations, so it does say 50 feet, and that has a footnote, but I think it's just going to drop. So you're saying that's 50 feet in addition to the right the, the way it works on the REF is the setback on top of the road right away. So the okay. road right away is 60 feet, on, and it is on most of the roads out here. Open road, okay. from the middle of the road, 60 feet out on my side. And then my setback on the house had to be 50 feet on top of that. So you won't have a house on Open Road if it's correctly located closer than 110 feet the center of the road. So, so if you're asking 50 feet, I think Dixie might be 120, I'm not sure. That might make it 170 feet back. I'm not sure what Dixie is about. I can look it up on the map. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 50 feet from the Dixie Highway right away. I'm just saying it's going to be more than you, more than, it's not going to be if your original concern was it's not going to be right. 25 feet to the edge of the road. It isn't. It's going to, it would have been 25 feet on top of the road right away. And I'm just guessing because Dixie's a four lane highway there that the road right away has got to be more than, I think, 60 feet there. I think it's 120. I'm not sure. That little yellow and gold map, wherever that is, it's got the numbers. Well, uh, we, we, we should identify, because this is all, all up and down Dixie Highway, that in addition to the Dixie right away, want X feet. we want X feet. And and if the Dixie right away is a uh, hundred and some feet, then I'm okay with 25. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got another side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I was thinking 25 feet from Dixie and I'm thinking, woo, that's a little too close. So, um, all right. Um, Gee, I'm ready to move to the next section. <laughs> anyway, um, actually, so I, this is just going to be organization here. I, I do have some specifics, but I want to move to organization because we've got what appears to be duplication. And I don't know if that was um, through the uh, editing with the Springfield. So we, it's, and it has to do with uh, landscape. So we've got um, under uh, streetscapes 1.1 site entrance landscape details and then in 2.4 so yeah there's site entrance landscape and there's site landscape right but okay so we do that but then we also have 2.4 site landscaping and then section 3.1 um we have all this. It's, it was word for word the same. So, um, so we have. Uh, let me let me do this. Yeah. Um, let me. I know that confused. So two point four on page eleven, and. Um, Oh, so 3.1 is the same as section 1.1, site entrance landscape details. Yeah. 
3.1 is the same as 1.1. I mean, word for word, right? Pretty much. So, so, so. Yeah, it's probably because, yeah, we were trying to condense some of theirs, so I may have moved some of the bit. Okay. The race of it. Okay, so we'll say gone. All right, so then on three point, or on 1.1. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like the the uh, pictures that you have for illustrations. That um, and this was just a question. When, when you say um, under the second bullet point of 1.1, 1, .1, one canopy tree shall be provided for every 40 feet within the 25 foot yard front yard. Um, should that be planted in straight lines at equal intervals? So. If, you're um, you're just saying you want random plantings, right? You don't want a uniform look going up and down. Right. So the, the census above it, they want they want it to be staggered. Yeah. Clustered. You can have them in a straight line if you like, but it, that makes it look less natural. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I just pointed out I I think I'm okay with that. I, I think both have some attraction when you look at you know different trees and. Kind of uniformity. I'm an engineer. I like straight lines, but <laughs> um, I'm okay with random. I'm also okay with straight lines. Um, well, I, I don't know how does. others feel here. It's really just a matter of like trying to mimic a natural, something more natural, and then when it's straight, it looks nice, but it also looks more like a planned community. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, anybody have any other questions on one point one? Comments. Um, uh, one point two. Um, I just. I, I know you're in kind of that state of. We're going to change illustrations, but, you know, we look at um, the bottom photograph on page five where you're showing buildings, and I know that's not our intent to have a. Uh, it's too urban looking and you know if, and if our point is to show a light fixture i'd rather just show a light fixture and not show some urban buildings to give somebody the wrong impression so i i'd, I'd like to not have that picture and then um i don't care it's really just a question of you know how do we choose teardrop and traditional or acorn style lighting. Is that <laughs> something common that people use or is that the... It's historic looking and it's um, easy enough to find still and it's uh, consistent with what Springfield took. So it would be consistent along the highway. Okay. Um, any, any other... A little more flexibility. Um, well, again, these are guidelines. I it really was just curiosity, you know, because I don't know anything about lighting. So, um, I have a question. Yes, there. yes. If we do uh, choose, you know, a corner or teardrop. Is it going to be uniform all the way up and down the corridor, um, or is it going to be up to the developer of the site? Oh. Because we've allowed them to have two different options, do you mean? Right. So or three or whatever what we choose. What we need to do is we'll say, you know, so we can reduce it to one so everyone has the same, or we can say here are three options, but on along the frontage of your property, you can only choose one of them. So we don't have different ones. Yeah, otherwise right. it's gonna be a mission. Okay. No, sure. no, that's a great point. Do you like the, the former the second option I said? Yes. Yeah, at least along the the frontage. Yes. Is that for the single position or dictate size? Size. So height is dictated yeah. here. Yeah. Um, what? So what else do you mean by size? Well, you're dictating somewhere. I'm sure the luminance. Uh, oh, like somewhere. intensity of light. Yeah. Yeah, that's in here. Mm -hmm. So we have a range. Um, 
The color and the, the candles are here, yes. The lighting height is here. Anything else on that? Um, move to 1.3, the, the uh, fencing details. Uh, I like what you have here. I just have a question. Um, you know, it seems to address the front and decorative, but what about, uh, and I thought I read somewhere else in here where if, near your, if you're near a residential area, you know, build a wall, which I'm not so sure is what we want, but we can, when we get to that section, but what if the building owner says, hey, you know, this guy next to me, his trash is always blown in my yard. I'm going to put a wooden fence up or between my property and his. So I, I just didn't see that we really addressed oh, on the side that. yard fencing or oh. rear fencing. Sure. <clears throat> um, I have no problem with that. I think what you're referring to, um, I think what you're referring to is in the, a section we've already covered, I believe, from landscaping, you know, it says for screening requirements, you can refer to a section of the zoning ordinance. And in there, it says that if you're to make compatible uses, so, you know, basically residential next to anything else, is how that's more or less defined, then you do have to put up a uh, screen. Yeah. And so that could be a fence. Yes. And that's uh, a hardier fence. Not just you. I mean, you don't have the details here, but if you read it, it's it's like you know two pieces of lumber. The screening is going to be like a brick wall that's six feet high to really kind of block sound and sight. And, all. and and I um I just don't know that I'm a fan of businesses putting, let's say, a brick wall between their two buildings, you know, that they want to separate, you know, here's my building. Just because of what it's going to, it's going to start closing in the area and blocking it out. What do you mean by two buildings? So, I mean, if they have two commercial buildings, they wouldn't put a wall that's their commercial building next to their house. Well, no, if, they, if I have two commercial buildings, I have one guy who's got five acres and he's got some business and oh. a building. And I got a guy next to him who's got three acres and he's got a business and they decide they want a brick wall between the, their two commercial properties. I'll double check that. I don't think that's permitted. I think what's permitted is if you're a basically residential up against something that could be louder. So you think in our ordinances, we don't require that? Um, I'll check, but um, so, so you're saying screening between Two, two commercial buildings. I, I don't think we want that. Am I alone in that or other people? I think it looks bad. I think you just start closing in the air. We want to keep it as open. I mean, they can put vegetation, they can, they can do, do trees, trees and, and shrubs and yeah. decorative so things. That's 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 better better yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Um, 1.4 sign details. Yeah. I don't uh, I don't understand, and I think it's in our ordinances too. And, and I, I know that a lot of work was done before I got on the board on sign ordinances, and I've been warned, you know, leave it alone, don't change it, don't go back there. Mm -hmm. um, but why is um, sign the last sentence? just above the photographs here. Signage text may not be added to bullnose, half round, quarter round, or water file, waterfall style canopies. Why is that? That's purely for aesthetics. I mean, that's not, uh, I think when people talk about what a nightmare sign can be, it's because you have to conform to that legislation I was talking about where you can't do, you know, this whole content. But that's um, something that was written in Springfield, so it's just for consistency, but you can't allow that if you want. I, I don't have a preference. I mean, I, I'd rather not have it there. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of consistency yeah. as you drive along, even though Springfield wants to be unique. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that. I just wonder if there's a reason. Um, the other thing um, I had was the, in the first bullet point on page seven, 
where it talks about illuminated channel letters and halo channel letters. Is that the blinking open sign in their window? It's like a, a, a near or a, or a solid lit, you know, where you've got letters that are in tubes that say open or closed or. Yeah. The page five, I'm sorry, I might have said seven. Page seven at the top, top bullet says for wall signs, dimensional metal letters or sandblasted signs with exterior gooseneck lighting are preferred. The next sentence, illuminated channel letters and halo channel letters may be used. I don't know what those are. I'm thinking they're the tubes that are illuminated that people have an open sign and it's a pink or orange illuminated letters that look like fluorescent tubes, I think is what that is. And if that is, I don't like them. I think those look tacky, those, if, if that's what it is. Just the internet search on whoops. Is that those look like they're illuminated behind the letters though? Not the, the yeah. that actual they're illuminated. I, I typed in sorry to say I don't remember exactly channel letters or halo, halo channel. Yeah, halo channel <laughs> letter, right. that's what I got. Yeah, that that's what they look like, that's fine. But again, that would be where a nice picture would help to to see what that is, because my my in my mind what it is is that cheap stuff you see with letters you know that don't light up anymore and god only knows what the sign oh, says neons yeah neons yeah all right that was a good long time ago and then just under uh, uh building and site details adding a you know repetitive language here but uh, consider green technologies oh in the first paragraph yeah, building and site details, just throw can, a sentence in. Can we go back to signs for a second? Yes. Um, Thank you. There's language in here, I gotta find a bullet point about having temperature and time. Oh yeah, on, on uh, electronic. Does anybody think that that's kind of useless? I mean, I, I don't know how much we want to dictate to someone's business model, but do we really need to see that? So that's explicitly written because, you know, how I was saying, we can't, um, we're not allowed to judge the content of people's science. That would be considered content, but that's so negligible, you know, that people are just saying, you can do that, even though we're not allowed to tell you you can do that. Like, we're not, you know, signs and temperature is not, uh, temperature and, and time is I guess usually not time. controversial yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, regarding natural stone we're not ever going to enforce synthetic versus natural are we or is it truly natural stone <laughs> I would know a difference because I'm in the business but that's the population wouldn't know Okay. So That's I just want to know what the intent is. If, if I would, my opinion on that would be if it's indistinguishable to most people driving by and it has a look of natural stone and it's easier or cheaper for people to use, then I would be okay with that. Yeah, I mean, I am a business. I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Here's. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I, um, I mean, if some, it is the appearance that we, we're looking for, and if they can give us the same appearance with a quality building product that is cheaper, so be it. Okay. Anything else? Um, I had a, under 2.1 site organization and building orientation on page eight. The second bullet point, really a question. The front entrance way shall be inset a minimum of three feet, but not less than six inches greater than the entrance door swing from the front 
building wall. So you're saying every doorway and every business has to be recessed. The front, the front door. The front door. Yeah. So every that was actually from um, the ordinance that Ben wrote. Um, but again, that might for maybe a more urban style development. Yeah, because you want a little doorway to get all the rain because they got a flat two-story building and may not have a canopy over it. I I just thought that was an unnecessary requirement that I don't know the benefit that it would give us, um, particularly because we talk about porches that you know we'd like people to have. So um, I just didn't see that as an architectural feature that we needed to regulate. Any, I agree. anyone disagree? All right, so. Um, I, I didn't have anything else on that on section uh, 2.2, site access. Um, very first sentence, site access and circulation shall be designed to promote vehicle, vehicular and pedestrian traffic safety. We wanna add bikes in there. Instead of writing pedestrian advice, I'll just write non residents. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Um, so, we're a parking lot for non residential uses. The residential use is six foot tall screen wall. Um, yeah, so you do. At the very last bullet there, you do talk about the walls as it relates to residential areas. I, I always prefer screening versus structures, but um, we're fine. <coughs> and then uh, 2.4, site landscaping. This is a repeat of uh, the ones with three point. Uh, this one, I did 1.1 and 1.2, and then we can do lines, but this one. 3.2. I don't understand. You've got a site landscaping in 2.4 and a site landscaping in 3.2. Sixteen. Yeah, page 11 and page 16. Okay, so that should have different uh, titles. Or <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Well, I'll I'll clean this up. We were trying to condense some of their language. Sure. No, totally understand. So I will make sure that you talk about what types of plants and flowers can be used. Yeah. I mean, you'll, your point is that she keeps that. Is that what your point you're making? Yeah, just a suggestion for the Right, because we wanted the, the list of the plants is great. We want to keep that. Yeah. Um, 2.5 site and parking lot lighting. I think, you know, this would be the area to kind of capture the point David made regarding, you know, the lighting up at the um, frontage has to be uniform not buried, you know, they don't get to pick different types. So that's probably at the, like 1.2, I made a note for that, because that's really entry lighting detail, so that'll be the lighting. But, but, you, the front yard. but when you say for site and parking lot lighting. Yeah, you want it to be the same as what's in the front. Um, no, not necessarily. I, I wasn't actually going there. I might, <laughs> but no, I was just, you know, as we, as we talk about 
site could be that road frontage. And it just, you know, it might be you refer back to the section 1.2 and you say, hey, you know, your site, but again, we've got requirements as it relates to the road frontage that it be similar and we don't get a, a mixture of lighting from property to property to property. So just, just that we kind of touch on that here as we talk about lighting. I am not a big fan of the box type fixtures um, in parking lots, but you know, if we're gonna do it, but I, I guess I don't have a, a problem. I think it's an efficient way to to light your, your parking lots. So, and if it's, and we're gonna have parking in the rear, so it's not like you're gonna see it from the road, the type of light fixtures that they have. So um, I didn't have a, but you do, uh, So other than other than the reference to the similar at the road fringe, I'm okay. Um, 2.5 community amenities. I just a, a question. I like this, um, but I, I think we'll get probably some pushback where it says outdoor storage is prohibited, and you know, a lot of times people might have a, a small building out behind, you know, that they've got some stuff in, you know, that's not part of their main business. That's fine. It just can't be outdoors. Right. right. And so, so um, outdoor storage to me would require a little more words to say, you know, outdoors, but um, not, it, it can't be just a little fenced in corner, right? <laughs> I mean, if you're, you need a, a building, if you're going to have on your property storage, you have to have it in a structure. So it must, storage must be in enclosed. Yeah, yeah, I think. The only place we allow for storage now anyway is make I do. I mean, is that reasonable? Uh, that's the only one I think we allow it in. It's oh, okay. Industrial too, the heavy industrial. Yeah, yeah. And then. I don't think we even allow it in I-1. So then it won't oh, we do. Yeah. yeah. So if we do, those are the only two, and there's very few parcels of land in the whole township. Okay. There's one on just the highway that, right across from Ray's Kitty Corner, they store um, stuff in those great big, huge, like recycling containers behind their building. And it's metal and it stands up super high. Right behind you. Right next to, okay, you got Mount Holly and then you've got the apartment complex. Yep. Next to that, they store metal and all kinds of coil and stuff in what looks like a big recycling. Shipping containers? Mm -hmm. That's on the Mount Holly parking lot, isn't it? No, 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 no. That is that is on that big sky or whatever road that is. Oh. Right Really? Yeah, it's just a and so I don't know if that's uh, oh I that's the guy at the end. Yes. Right by the road. Yeah, he's right got right. industrial zoning there. Yes. Okay. That that's one of the few pieces I think we've got like three in the township. Okay. And he's got one of them. And that's why he's putting that other building up. He doesn't like leaving his equipment outside. But but he does have a huge container there and Lots of containers. Yeah, and he and he's putting a building up because he wants to keep it in. But he's actually zoned for that stuff. And we did it because it's at the end of Big Sky. You're saying it's at the road? No, he's at the road. The person I'm talking about is right at the road. You can see it when you drive by Dixie on Dixie Highway. Oh, that first building? Because uh, uh, I've always sure. wondered what they do and what is all his stuff stacked so high in those places. That's a good question. I don't know. I thought you meant the far end. No, I'm just talking driving down Dixie Highway. Okay. I don't, I don't even know who's in there. I was in the other end of the building today, but I didn't even notice. I have to look at it all. Well, I think on Dixie Highway, I mean, we'll have this language in here that's actually going to be too big of an issue. Uh, my next comments were in the next section, uh, two point, oh, still in that same section, 2.5 community amenities. Um, the, I, I don't like the photographs because I think it, it looks more like urban areas. So to the extent that you're trying to show, um, you know, paver stones, 
let's find another way to use paver stones that looks like a trail through nature versus a sidewalk in an urban city center. These are the two photographs on page nine, immediately above section 2.3, the use of pavers to designate pedestrian spaces, but you get photos of urban areas. So just, you know, a different type of illustration of what you're trying to accomplish, you know, the pavers in a nature trail kind of. Because it's really the paper stones you're trying to do, not the to illustrate how you can use it for pedestrian walkways. And, and so then that goes to the second bullet immediately above the photos that start sidewalk shall be a standard scored concrete at minimum. And then stone or brick pavers as well are textured colored uh, textured concrete may also be used. Um, Standard scored concrete is your classic sidewalk. Is that? Yeah, I, I'd like to say no. <laughs> Don't do that. You know, um, you stone and brick papers. Yeah, or you could have stamped concrete. You can have exposed aggregate, you know, type concrete. But you know, we want to we want to do a little more of an upscale look here, and you know, standard concrete sidewalk slabs. Um, I'd like to, you know, require a little bit more. How does the how do other members feel? This would be at the entrance. Uh, where, where do you visualize this? It, it's going to be where they allow pedestrian walkways. It'll probably be more to the front of their buildings, and because that's where they're going to be walking, or maybe a spot from the back parking lot to get to the front. That's where their main entrance is. I like the idea. I agree. Agree. So we'll scratch, you know, they can do um, stamped concrete. They can, you know, colored and stamped, but you have textured concrete. So, um, but let's take out standard scored concrete at a minimum. Um, <coughs> yes. Is there any concern that cost prohibitions would enter into? I mean, if the design here, if the intention is to promote um, you know, kind of development within the, you know, the, that reflects the spirit of the township, uh, how do cost considerations play into you know, these types of discussions? Because I'm assuming, you know, concrete, cement is much more affordable than a paper walkway, especially if you're talking dimensions of a sidewalk in proportion. Is it a concern? Should it be a concern? I think the developer would bring that to the township in their site plan and look at their <clears> approvals. <throat> and, you know, they could say, look, you know, the, the extent of walkways that we want, you know, this is cost prohibitive to us. And we'd say, some of it isn't, you know, <laughs> the part that people are going to see in the front, you know, we negotiate with them, right? So I think it's, these so are the guidelines. It retains the flexibility to deviate from whatever the- These the are guidelines, okay. yep. They would come to us and they would know the deviation, but most of the time, in my opinion, as a developer would say, okay, you know what? We've got choices here. The most cost-effective is going to be concrete over paper. And I don't ever see the enormous disparity between stamped concrete Stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not stamp stuff that much. Yeah. Much more so regular. Because I have the points that is well taken. We're asking them to do other things that have caused consequences, like the stone base around the fence, the bridges around the signage, or something like that. But it's our township, and that's the cost to play here. And it's not significant. Mm -hmm. For example, Bloomfield Hills could still enforce any type of signage has to be black and gold. With somebody, if you're a realtor, you've got to go out and buy a black and gold sign if you're going to have a listing in Bloomfield Hills. It's just the cost of the labor. And, yeah. and I think it's appropriate. <laughs> Understood. Good. That does bring me to a good point, though, um, because 
we should get this terminology correct and I'll be on the same page about this. These are called guidelines, um, but similarly to what Springfield Township says, we do say all proposed development and construction in this overlay shall comply. And shall means people's ability yeah. we're going to negotiate. So we can soften that language or we just have to get it right. Well, we but we have wiggle room written in certain requirements such as plantings and you know um, landscaping yeah. and, and stuff. So um, and there's also this catch-all at the end, which we'll get to. It says flexibility in, in application. Yeah. So we do have some room, but 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 I I think we want areas of firm rules. The consistency of the lighting so that we have a uniform look as we go but i think the just as jim eloquently stated there's a cost to play here in groveland and that's we don't have standard old concrete sidewalks you know we do a little more upscale and those sure. things are things that we are going to require but you make a great point thank you um 2.3 architectural features. I think this is just a holdover from Ben. Um, and it's just my, I guess, personal preference, but I don't like flat roofs. I don't like the look of them. I think they're a nightmare to maintain. And um, it always, you know, so we have at the last sentence of section 2.3, unless otherwise approved by the planning commission, buildings should have flat, low pitched gabled or hip roof lines i like to just eliminate flat i i, I just you know that's a a more urban look i think does anybody disagree with that where is it the uh under architectural features 2.3 yeah. the last sentence unless otherwise approved by the planning commission right oh, under the, the, the oh, photos yeah that's fine that um that matches more when we get to these are and the 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 other thing is kind of I think a holdover from when Ben was looking at this and we had discussions on it. Um, your last bullet point on page nine, it starts any facade over a hundred feet in length, blah 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 blah, and then it says you know fifty the next sentence fifty percent of the facade shall be dedicated to window space. And we talked about that and said, you know, the front of their building does not have to be 50%. And, and that was Ben thinking of walking down the street and your window shopping as you go along and they have window displays, but that isn't necessarily going to be the types of businesses we have here. So I don't, I don't see a need to, we don't want all brick buildings with no windows, right? But I, I thought 50% was a lot to ask of. So do you want that standard with just a smaller percentage? Or do you want a standard? I would say that it has to be proportional. There needs to be a proportional level of, of windows in the front facade to the arch other architectural features and leave it flimsy so you can look at it and say if you like it or not. Say, oh, that's not proportional. <laughs> and did you want to strike flat roof? I did. I wanted to strike flat roof and I wanted to strike 50%. So for the flat roof, and then flying the fact that I mean, what about for like a warehouse? You know, there's going to be certain things that have to be in the three. There will be a case custody, for example, the marijuana facilities. I think they're all flat roof, large warehouse buildings. Yeah, and, and you know, and that goes to is that the look we want? Is that what we're trying to do? Is a large I, warehouse building on Dixie I don't, Highway? I don't think that's the look we want, probably for Dixie Highway, but the area that we would anticipate those kinds of buildings would be what, what you would call the industrial park area, and and that's where they are in in Orion Township over by the GM plant in that premier park. All, all the buildings in there are basically warehouses facilities in the and, and, and so you think within this shaded overlay that is where it would fall? Well that, over that, like over here? Yeah, it would be, but it's not on the frontage of the road. It's back inside the park. 
if you remember the original concept for the township property that the planning department in the county did, the frontage on I-75 and on Grange Hall Road was like the retail, open timber, stone, that kind of thing. The big area in the middle, we just said future staging area. We didn't know what we wanted there. Well, now it looks like, assuming we go on that path, that's an excellent place to put the potential marijuana growers because there's nobody around them and there's nothing that they can bother with. But all of those facilities are usually what is a typical warehousing facility in the sense that they're big square buildings, they have a flat roof, the whole second floor of the building is really air handling and purification equipment, not actually warehousing. That's just the way they're all made and they're building three or four of them there and they're all done the same way. So I think it would be extremely hard to make buildings that size with anything other than a flat roof. Um, I just don't know how you do it. They're, they're huge spans. And, uh, and but there, I don't think it distracts, distracts from the facade value of the overlay district because it's back inside the part of the property that we had originally kind of said, I don't know, maybe it's going to be a parking lot. Yeah, but you know, the, the, I, I agree with everything you just said, but the problem is it, that property is in the overlay district. And, and even though it's not going to have frontage, like what we typically think, okay, as we go up and down M15, or M15, Dixie Highway, you know, we want it to look this way. Well, They're I, not going to see it. I think what might be easier to, or even more reasonable one would be that if they have any kind of a office facade that complies with the overlay district, but the building itself is going to have to be, there's just no other way to build it. Agreed. And, Agreed. And, um, and one of the things I would say, Orion did this. They, the growers wanted to say, we don't want as much parking because we don't have nearly as many people working in here. And they said, yeah, but someday you might not be here and whoever buys the warehouse needs to do it. The other thing I noticed is they're not quite like any warehouse I've ever seen. Usually you have some place appears to be the front of the building and the entrance where there might be offices. And then the rest of it's a big box. Well, the ones that are built for the big Class C growers are just a big box with some doors along the way that are numbered. And if you don't know, I'm just telling you, if you don't know what door to come in, <laughs> you aren't getting that because some of them are there just for the fire department to be able to respond to fires without, I think, without destroying the entire cultivation inside all of them. So it seems to me, it, frankly, in keeping with what Orion was trying to do by maintaining the parking lot structure, even if those growers weren't there, somebody else would probably typically have one side of the building where is your main entrance and maybe some office stuff. And they have it all hidden in there, kind of, and it all, I drove around the building the second time I went there twice trying to figure, how the hell door did I get in the first time where I met the guy? I, I said, I think it was back where that railing was, but I'm not sure, you know. And then he came out and found us. But uh, so I'm not sure it wouldn't be bad to have a a facade for the entrance or the office so that the building has more unilateral use should somebody else move in in the future. You know, some people speculate that if the government makes this all legal, all of a sudden there won't be any prohibition because of crossing state state lines. And what could happen then is the entire business moves out to the farm fields of Idaho and thousand acre farmers and they grow it for the whole country or whatever. I don't know, who knows? But to that end, we wouldn't want to have a bunch of buildings that had very poor utilization for anything else in the future. Because, you know, typically on our buildings, we try and our intention is to try and say, we're not selling the land. We're going to give you a really good deal to lease it for a long time. You don't pay, I gotta get a building for nothing. That's really what happens. So I think it would be better to have some protection along those lines. Couldn't we stipulate that flat roofs were can only be on I one or I two? Uh, and that's really all they're on, yeah. I, I would agree. I would wouldn't that make it I would or I two and, and make the maybe whatever the functional main entrance of the building is must have some facade that complies with it. I would bet even in Orient, 
those buildings would look a little better. And if you and maybe they want it so that nobody's going to live there. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the only other guy that can get into the doors is the fire chief or something. They can call. But. All right. So, what was your committee that I wanted I to and and even in I one and I two, you want there to be a certain yes. You want all the facade to be the same. The only difference well, is the in the well, no, area. Not that no, because those warehouses are all stone. They won't happen to be all brick. But um, I, I think if you have an office or main entrance to that warehouse, what I was suggesting is making that office or main entrance comply with whatever the facade requirements are in the district so that okay this is the front of the building and there's a couple offices before you get into whatever is in the rest of it that's got the stone or the open timber or whatever and the gabled roof for that entrance which would make it look a lot i agree much better i just don't think anybody expects in the event that you're putting whether it's a laser manufacturing facility or a class c marijuana grower that if you put that building up, the huge part of the industrial building is going to look like anything other than, frankly, a huge box. industrial building. Yeah, got it. So we're All looking right. to obscure the flat roof. Well, um, if in an industrial application, because it's actually required because of the size of the building that they need for their operations, we're saying you have to have some sort of a the office front facade that'll match with the other criteria within the district, overall district. Mm -hmm. So if we took that area and made that all industrial complex that was just labeled future development, and there were different industrial buildings there, whether it's Nick's laser plant or the guys with the class C growers or something, they'd have large buildings, but they would at least all have a entrance facade, which was consistent with what the rest of the values are. On a related topic, I can't picture right now any of the elevations of the fire station are they they, they aren't but i we've discussed that we're kind of exempt from it because we're so far into the plan i can't if we don't get the plan done now we finally got the approval from lansing this morning to go ahead with the prints we'll never get the building up <laughs> and it's kind of a match to go with the task force one building that's there anyway. mm -hmm. only i've added some stone on the bottom because i was Guessing when we were doing it, I said I don't want it as plain as the task force one building. So the bottom several feet of it is stone all the way down. The facade would be easy to change. That's fine. Again, part of that is tied to the roof they got to use in the span of the distance of it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right. Next. Yeah. Um, the last two bullets of uh, on page 10, we start talking about residential structures. Um, all residential structures, this is the second to the last bullet, about the second or third sentence. All residential structures shall include a front porch. The porch shall have a minimum depth of six feet and a minimum area of 72 square feet. The front facade will be at least 15% windows. Um, the first floor elevation shall be no less than 24 inches, blah, blah, blah. I, I guess I hadn't really thought as we went through this that we were going to regulate the residential construction yeah. that occurs as we go down this byway. Um, businesses, yes, the commercial development, I, I had not been thinking about the residential well, and that's a safe bet no one's going to build a new residential home i don't year. think so that ain't happen. Yeah. and the ones that are already there are all grand property, so they yeah have to yeah i i kind of like to not have that language yeah. there i don't know how others feel i hate it okay and then the last one i think should go the same spot as <laughs> The other bullet today, detached garages for residential structures shall be located in the rear yard, blah, 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 and set back a minimum of three feet from the rear and side lot lines and 10 feet from the main building. So I say we just scratch that. That's, we're not going to do three feet. Oh, sorry. The last two bullets. <coughs> yeah. I think so. The last two bullets on page 10, just delete. 
Sure. And and so the pictures will insinuate that you guys can see this is the architectural style that Springfield has crafting style, Perry style. Um, I left them in you guys so you guys can see them, but this is probably not an area where we need to see a little bit more from them. So um you have I mean, I can't really rename architectural styles. I guess I could just call it rustic. But uh, this prairie one to me doesn't look that rustic. Mm -hmm. But then if we don't have options, we know all of the options. Yeah, so, or, and, and, and then they describe them more in detail about you know, what they should look like. I guess we don't have to use names at all either. We already have the building materials, the setbacks. I mean, we have everything, what a roof can look like. Um, yeah, I mean, you could, you know, rather than even say, you could say, you know, uh, architectural styles that incorporate stone, wood, and, you know, and then show a craftsman style house. And just don't call it, just say it incorporates these features, these architectural features of stone and wood and you know, just don't name them. These look like residential. Houses. Yeah, yeah, these do. And we so, have all the residential houses. Right, right. Yeah. right. So, so we should have some, you know, more this, of the building. Well, we can have a commercial example. Yeah, right, right. Correct. Yeah. 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 We're getting there. And, you know, so for example, on page 14, I mean, I like the uh, illustrations that you have there. Sure, the, you have three photographs above the section of landscaping. You're showing a nature overlook with educational oh, signage. Uh -huh. the, those three photographs I like. I, I think that captures, you know, kind of the impression they're trying to leave people with. And then uh, 3.1, you're going to incorporate 3.1 and 3.2 with the other sections on landscaping, right? Okay. That's all I had. <laughs> Should we go over the last section just so we can see the, the flexibility and application? So the purpose of the guidelines are to establish design expectations. Um, however, the township recognizes that applicants may experience building and site constraints that prevent the full or partial realization of certain guideline requirements. The township is willing to work with applicants on a case-by-case -case basis to allow for some design flexibility while still ensuring that the design is met. I like that a lot. We can thank Springfield for that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me. Uh, Bob, would you would you get that thank you note sent, please? <laughs> yeah, she wants to have lunch next week. <laughs> I got a question for the group. Uh, section two point four. I the way I interpret it is that the landscape maintenance plan. Going to be submitted presumably to the set of drawings that will find it. Page are you on, Jim? Um, 11. 11. Yeah, we're at 2.4, so I'll try to find it again. Yeah, so all of these will have to go through site plan review, so they'll have to um, they'll have to submit a landscape plan, and then this is the additional requirements that detail the landscape maintenance. So it's a serious question. I'm a little out of touch. Is that something in present day building and development you submit a maintenance plan for your landscaping? Um, that, so I do site plan reviews. Um, if those are required, those would go to the city. So I haven't looked at I've that. never seen one. Nobody even heard of one. It, nobody's it's checking it anyway. It's kind of like having uh, who's the police for whether or not you do your master plan every seven years, like clockwork. When you find somebody who went to jail for it, let me know. <laughs> I, I have nobody, there's nobody I have checking landscape. The closest that's come to that is when Renaissance Festival had to plant the 
Christmas trees along the parking lot next to the mobile home park. And then in the Christmas, when things got tight, a bunch of people went and cut them all down for Christmas trees. And it was kind of like, I don't think we should make them put them back up. They're just going to cut them down. Well, you know. I, I'm okay with it in there just because if we ever needed the horsepower I, for something, I just have never seen it. I don't see it. <laughs> Most of it has been relevant to the original site plan where somebody tries to put a small bush in and the planning commission says, no, it needs to be at least five or six feet tall. The second to last bullet point on 2.4, oh. there's a I was going to say the opposite. If you want to keep them, that's fine. But I would also say if there's no one going to enforce it and there's no staff that it yeah. maybe we know. Yeah, it's the second bullet point on page 12. I agree. To delete it. Good catch. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that way. <laughs> any, uh, any other comments or questions? Or? Can I add to Bob's comment about them cutting down the trees? She did go back and plant, as you know, yeah. big trees because she thought if I plant little, little ones, ones they'll keep down. cutting them down. Yeah. And she did replant. Yeah, she did. She's fantastic. Oh, the she's very good. Yeah. Yes. Good. Well, I'm going to have a litmus test because I'll bet the Renaissance Festival this year is going to set an all time record. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't here last year. Right. So. Don't come and complain about it. I can't get down Dixie because you can bet you're not going <laughs> to. Do you want to wait for the next planning commission to review the images, or do you want to pass judgment on the images by email ahead of time? So we'll have to have a special meeting. Yeah. 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 It can't do things via email. But um, I would, so that's my next question is if you guys want to wait until September, I can clean up all of this language, or if you want to finish the meeting in August. Then I can have it to a week beforehand, like we usually do, with the edits <laughs> and um, the the details for rendering. But so because this is um, you know regulation, there does have to be a public hearing for this. So I would say we want to wait to have the public hearing until it's pretty spot on to what you guys exactly want. Um, so that could be next time if I make these changes, or it could be like another working session, and then we have the public hearing. So the ch main changes now, we have the public hearing September and August. We can do that. Um, it, it also depends on the development pressure. I mean, do you feel like a huge sense of urgency currently, or do you think if we wait until <laughs> September? <laughs> I don't know. I'm with well, an Indian chief Thursday, so I can't tell you right now. I I I I don't have a preference. Um, I don't think there's a huge pressure. Yeah, I I um I'm just sensitive to calling extra meetings if we don't need them, quite frankly. Um, but if we if we wait till September, that that would be just another review. It wouldn't be the public hearing. Well, I, I don't feel comfortable. I don't know how you guys, I, I'd like one more look at it before we do the public hearing myself. I agree. I want it clean. Yeah. Um, I, you know, so I, you seem to have, you know, some feelings over there, Danielle. I mean, would you prefer it? Because I don't care. I don't know that anyone well, cares. Well, the other thing that we have to consider is you have to go to the township board. So what meeting would that be? Request the amount of money that it will take. I'll do that in August. So we'll do that. So it'll be before the next week. Okay. Okay. I, I think. So we can probably have to wait until we can work on it until we get. So let's plan September to review it again. Then, if we need to call a meeting in October to do the public hearing, we can do that. That. Get it wrapped up before the end of the year. We'll be doing. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Before <laughs> the end of the year. Really, before. I mean, it's not like we've had so many delays that this is not going to make a big difference. <laughs> Any other questions on this before we September 28th will be our next meeting. You have to you can call about this meeting. 
could have well, the this would be the only thing out of it. Well, I know, but if, if we get the approval at the board meeting for the drawings after we get the estimate, and she can get it done, and you want, we could have a meeting in, in August for you, and then be ready in September. It's not, the only reason we have meetings every other month is when the economy slowed down in eight and nine. There was nothing going on, so we said, well, let's kind of have the meetings out. Actually, we could go back to every month if we needed to, so it certainly would be a problem to put one extra month so, in the meeting. Rod Manor was originally on here, and you know, Jenny and I had talked that you know he's still running off the special use that expires in 2022. Um, some of the language does state that he needs PC approval. Um, but for what changes, Michelle and I have talked through some of the things. We're not really too sure what what it means. Actually, I've got years and years of stuff that I've been looking through. And Jenny and I have said that let it go until 2022 and then come back and revamp it for another special use, whether it be three years. So the way I, and I'm not saying I'm right, and this is what I expressed though, is that we did the multi-year special use so they doesn't have to keep coming back. Yeah. If he were to say, hey, I'm putting an adult bookstore here, we'd say, well, that's, oh, yeah, well, well, that's, not, yeah, that, that's not the special use we approved. But, so but that's he's, the language we're looking for because it, it looks like you guys approved it with conditions, right? And one of the conditions is you have to come back every three years. So we're trying to find where it's written. What are the other conditions? Like if he wants to just build a little barn, full barn, does he have to come in within between those three years? Or like in the adult bookstore, hopefully that's a condition that says certain uses you're we, coming in. To, and, when I look through, when, when Daniel asked me and I look through our horrible ordinances, um, I, uh, the, where I, the trail led me to no specific language that addresses that, right. no specific language that we put in our meeting minutes or conditions of, upon the special use that we did for him. And so where I ended up was finding a trail to site plan approvals. And that it looked to me as if through site plan approval, that could be handled at the township and the building level and the um, inspectors. The whole purpose for it was we did them every year because we, were, we never did it before. After a while, they all got pretty regimented and normal. And even the Renaissance Festival had a three year permit. What changed it takes it out of the three-year permit is when something significant happens that fundamentally changes the way it does. And in the case of the Renaissance Festival, it was the year of horror and traffic <laughs> and nobody could get up and down Dixie. And they said, that's it. You don't get any more three-year permits. <laughs> They're every year now, okay? So we, we did that for the Harvest Farm and Nick had it. We've done it for them. It would be if he was doing something substantial that changed it. He does add features to the haunted house every year or you don't get any business apparently. But when you're talking about adding a pole barn, which he uses to store all the gory things they put in there, you know, the mummies and stuff, he, that's what he puts in there or he works on it in there. So that's not fundamentally changing it. But we also have a good relationship with him. When some neighbors came in, if you remember, it said, oh, that damn air cannon goes on, yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. No problem, Bob, I'll turn it on, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the essence of cooperation we need. And when they don't, that's when we come back and say, great, you now got a one year permit. And I'm just thought that's how it's done. And, so and right now this whole bar can just go off the building permit. I think so. Yeah. It's it's within the intent of what he's supposed to do. And then come 2022 when he reapplies, well, he has to have a new plan. site plan and yeah. he's got to show us what he's doing okay. and the operation. But I think it's all within the building department okay. and the, the offices and not right. the planning commission. Okay, so that's I came cool. to a similar conclusion. And when you look at the site plan review, you know, this is an accessory structure, this pole barn, that it doesn't have to come here. But yeah, we wanted to talk to you. I needed some more information from staff because, like you said, none of this is spelled out anywhere, and I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Well, it's, it's, it's only because we really didn't, you know, like, I handle a haunted house. I don't know. I guess we'll fuck. <laughs> Let's do a special use permit, see what happens, right? And really, that's what happened with the Harvest Farm, the Haunted House, the Renaissance Festival, you know, because everybody Seasonal thinks we put all this yeah. stuff in some magic formula and cooked it up, but no, it's not. <laughs> They all basically got hoisted on us, you know. 
It's just figuring out how to do it. All right, which is why it's off the agenda. <laughs> We're going to leave that topic off the agenda. Okay. Now um, we are moving away from the Dixie overlay topic. I do have one quick question. Okay. Sorry. Um, do we need to um, make a motion to for the money for, what money? for the township board to? Um, oh, for the renderings. Yeah. Yes, okay. she's going to give us an estimate, and you're going to put it on the township board agenda. So we don't have to anything like that here, though. No, no, no. Okay. Sure. Michelle will give us an estimate. You put it on the township board of August agenda, and then we'll prove it. She can get it Just, done. And if you need it, we'll have an extra meeting in August. For the yeah, it, the meeting minute. The, the, the meeting minutes. Just need to reflect that we made the request. Yeah. That, okay. that that's fine. Got yeah. it. All right. Um, so next is discuss the PUD. And so. Who wants to, Bob? You want to? Discuss, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. What? Who wants to discuss the, uh, the? Oh, the PUD. We had PUD. that discussion where Michelle thought that we couldn't have any retail, and you and I were discussing that we didn't think they said that. So. Yeah. So I, well, so what I recall our last conversation about this was in the PUD it says that the buildings have to directly serve its customers, and when I read that, you guys said we don't like that. Like, so I thought tonight the discussion was about. Is that it is. Point? It is the discussion we want, but we. Our intent, whatever we got to turn around, our intent was the PUD was truly to allow mixed use of all the available uh, zoning ordinances so that the Planning Commission would have the flexibility of figuring out what work and it wouldn't be as constricted for us. And a perfect example is the township's property. We got roughly 90 acres there. I, I still. Couldn't tell you exactly what's going to be on every acre of it. So we need some flexibility in the PUD to be able to say, well, this is kind of where we're going. And if somebody comes in with an application that we think fits in there, then we'll consider that and adjust it for it. Because, and to do that, you have to have basically all of the zoning options, other than extractive, available to you. And so my comments had been that. I did not see the language in here that gave me the impression that you uh, that of the impression you had taken away serving customers. And so I'm saying we don't if that's there, we don't that wasn't our intent. We'll change the language, but I can't find the language. So you would have to point us to it and say, here's where I'm reading it. And that's what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well I, the change won't be too difficult, but but it, we just need. Just be crossing it out, right? Yeah, but I, I, I'm not. Yeah, so just if you could just point us where in this ordinance the language is giving you that level of interpretation, okay. then we'll address it. And then that, that you know, it's, if I do find it, you want to cross it out. That one would be a conflict Yep. All right. Yeah. I heard something I can bring up here. I think I can bring it up. So there's a flow chart in our PUD zone. A component of the flow chart, I, it could be on page eight. Toward the bottom on the right side, there's a box that says sureties. And a few years ago, I brought this up either at the board or the planning commission, but I wanted us to visit this now and just brought it to my attention. So I want us to consider somebody comes in with grandiose ideas that we're gonna they're gonna develop something anywhere in the township, but let's say in the overlay district, and either is a ploy, and trust me, I have seen people do this as a ploy. They say our funding is expired or we're going broke. And we're look, looking at some edifice that is awful, sitting there for a couple of years. If it's a ploy until somebody can come back and buy it, or if, if the person just screwed up, we're looking at a hall. I like the idea, but I don't know how to incorporate having sureties for certain projects here that at least if somebody goes under, that we call them a bond. Yeah, 
Here's the problem, though. I can tell you from the mining bonds and the discussions I had with Tom Plunkett. On. He said, yeah, you got to ask for the bonds, Bob, but I'm just telling you right now, you're never going to collect them. Again. <laughs> he said, the first thing the bond company will do on a mining company is argue and disagree with you and drag it out in court so long, you'll forget whatever it is you want. So, I, and, and I think he's right. I understand what you want to do, but the only surety that ever really works was when we would do a variance and tell somebody, okay, you've got uh, six months or 12 months to build the principal residence. If you don't, you post $10,000 cash surety with the township. We put it in an account, hold it for you. You get it back when you pull your building permit. But if you don't, we're using your 10 grand, take down your outbuilding, something like that. And, and I've never seen anyone actually do it because when you tell them they have to put the money up to get it done, they usually don't want to do it. And frankly, that's advisable. You don't want typically to have people doing things out of sequence because it's always where the problems come up. You know, the reason we put, you can't put an outbuilding on a property until the principal residence is there is because all them horses died on Grove One Road that time when Don was here. And he said, we can't have that. The guy never came back and fed them. He just left them and six horses died of thirst, I think. And, and he had to get them all buried. So that's how that stuff gets done. We have never, to my knowledge, actually collected a surety deposit on something because you need to make it stiff enough that it can get it done. And most people don't want to wrap that much money into it. It's, it's just they don't. It, and what we'd rather they do is well, pull your building permit for your house, and then you come and get your building permit, put your barn, you know. I know what they're trying to do because when I built my house, I think we had the barn on before the house because they were delivering <laughs> building materials sure. into the house, the, into the barn, to lock them up and stuff. I, I'm just telling you, if you try to do that with a major project, you'll end up with what happened in uh, Pontiac and Bloomfield yeah. where that big structure got like 80% up and then the developer went belly up and it sat there forever. And by the time it got bought by somebody, I think they literally had to tear it back down because none of it was worth anything. I don't know how you can get it up in a bond company. My understanding is those bond companies will drag that out forever before you get it. It's like suing somebody for making you sick and then the company says, well, the award was a billion dollars. The interest on that's a hundred million a year. You know what? Tie it up in court for the next 15 years and you could spend a hundred million a year and it won't cost us a penny. And maybe they'll forget what they did and it'll be gone. That's, that's literally how they do it. Well, you, Bob, you bring up a, a great point because we, uh, and it was something I was going to address at the end of the meeting, but on the Board of Zoning Appeals, mm -hmm. we had a recent situation where down Dixie, um, we uh, have the garage or whatever it was. They put two outbuildings. Yeah, it's going to court yeah. tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow? Yeah, it's going to court. But so we had a, a resident who, um, it's that lake, it's just yes. north of Perryville. Oh, Road. Old lake. Yeah, you know, and so we've got somebody that bought property there. And if you're driving down Dixie Highway, you'll see there's a wooden gate that's yeah. locked yes. and a little road. That's the property. So you got a road that goes down, there's a lake. And we, I believe the township has had a fair amount of complaints of the noise and partying and campers yeah. that are there. Well, this gentleman came in and he has plans to build a house on, he's got two lots, he said, so a total of six acres. And he wants to maintain that property, you know, with lawnmowers and weed whackers. So he has two buildings, oak buildings that he's put on the property, all under 200 square feet, one's 10 by, 20 you know, oh, one, garage well yeah one one yeah i mean 10 by 20 and another one's uh eight by 12. he was told numerous times you can't put any buildings up there patty told him had extensive discussions yeah with him. i think pam told him before that and he yeah. may have even talked to me he just went ahead and did it anyway yeah he did he went ahead and did it and i'm pretty sure there's more than just lawnmowers and mm -hmm. being on a lake and having activities there every weekend i'm sure there's more than just lawn maintenance equipment in there and so the township's gone after him to take to remove yeah. those because he doesn't have a primary residence on there these are not permitted I assume. no because they they're under 200 knowingly so. that he was not allowed to do it okay. and never pulled permits yeah well because he said he kept them under the 200 square foot he requirement 100 he never pulled them jerry did make him pull his zoning permit okay and then denied it 
<laughs> but he so I, I, so he came here and you know said financial hardship because all the price of lumber and everything that's going up with COVID and so he can't start his house but he wants to maintain this lawn. Financial hardship is not a valid reason I know, for variance. I know. Right. So well we denied him you know <laughs> so he, he did not get a variance but the discussion that came up from the members of the BZA and I said I'd bring it here was well what if people do post a surety bond because there are people that you know the house um Gina, you know, our house burns right. down and they've got to rebuild it. And can they put a garage up first so they can store materials and then get the house rebuilt? And, you know, we've been pretty firm on that ordinance in this township. And that was my statement to them that we rarely, I'm not aware of any time we have granted a variance to that requirement. You must have the primary residence built before you have uh, um, auxiliary buildings. Right. And 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 so the question was, could could they come and get a surety bond? Well, in, in the position of the planning commission, the entire time in the BCA that I was on it was because we felt the bonds were worthless. You can't get a surety bond. I want a surety. That's why we use that language. A surety meant if it's ten thousand dollars to tear it down, you bring ten thousand dollars to the township, you put it in a bank account. It's interest, and we give it back, you'll get the interest on it. You don't get it till you live up to your end of the bargain. That is surety, not a surety bond. What we didn't want to do was the bonds, because we know you're never going to collect them. Okay. And so that's actually the decision of the planning or the BZA. You guys would be the ones that decide, well, we'll let you do it. I'm picking a number out of the air. We think it's 20 grand to clean all that junk up, okay? And you got to bring in 20 grand, and then we'll let you do it. You know? So you would. The BZA would be the ones to. And I, and I don't know of any that actually got. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I told them in my years, I've never ever granted a, a variance for that Maybe ordinance, you. nor has there been any type of surety discussed. Or, okay. We used to talk in the early days on the BZA about surety bonds, but then we agreed because we found out how hard it is to collect the bonds. You said, that is, the heck with that. Give me the money. Well, and you'll get it back. The, if you're doing what you say, the, you'll get your money back. But in the meantime, you want. The problem I have with the BZA being the ones to decide is one, and that particular property, no member could view it because he's got the gate lock and we couldn't have yeah, access. I tried to take so we couldn't, to see it. yeah, so we couldn't, we couldn't take a look at it and see. Yeah, and know, then, you know, and the, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let me see this lawnmower. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then the other part is um, we wouldn't have the skill sets to set the amount of money. I, you know, I don't know how I mean, much it's going to take. If it's a and that's why I never, it's really, it's just, you sit there and look at it and somebody on the board might be able to say from experience, I think taking down Nick's barn and that other thing is going to be seven or eight grand. Okay. I wouldn't have guessed that. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I, but I don't know. That's the guy said, I'll give him a deal. I'll do it for about 7,300, I think is what he says. Oh, great. You know, so I would look at that and say, I don't know, you can't get anybody to come out now on a small job for anything, right? You know, so you, you know, you think it might say, it looks like five grand, we're probably need 10 grand. I mean, you set the amount and if they don't like it, well, then you don't get the variance, I guess. But uh, you're right. I don't know any that have actually done it. We used to have a couple that would have to post like $500 till they got the green belt on the building that they were supposed to do. I think we did one or two of those, and that's about it. You know, make sure they did the plantings. Might have done all the style rock damn thing too, because. You know, See, I was thinking was going to show off. you're saying the BZA, but I was thinking it was going to be the planning commission that would amend the ordinance that no. says. <laughs> No, it's, see, the planning commission would actually be what happens is the person comes in and says, I want to put a building up on a property. Can't do it without a primary building. You're denied. Their next legal course is to then, because if they go to court and say, I want to do it, and they wouldn't let me do it, the first thing the judge will ask me is, Did you exhaust all your remedies at the township first? But if you the, go to the BZA. But no. if the ordinance says you can't do it unless you post a surety no, bond. I don't think it says that. Uh, no, I'm saying oh. that you would amend. Oh. See, I'm saying that's why I'm saying the planning yeah. commission. You would amend it and say, I'm not sure a lot of deviation yeah. from it. And that's kind. Of, I mean, it, 
think about it, it kind of reeks of like pay to play. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if the, the remedy and the legal way is they have to ask the planning commission. If it doesn't comply, you say you're denied. That gives them the right to go to the BCA. And if the BCA denies it, they don't come to me. Yeah. I have no authority after that. You, you don't like it? Take the township to court and see if the judge agrees with you, which normally they're not. Now, this will be an interesting one to see because there's plenty of discussion. People told them you can't do that. You just did it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't I don't have a lot of sympathy I, I don't for somebody that does that. I, I, I agree, but I, I'm looking more at the example that Gina brought up where her house burned down and you have a hardship and you have people and you know they have every intent. I, I don't and I think on most of those, I would have to say probably some common sense gets involved where people might say, was well, the insurance company doing it? They're, they're paying for this. We know it'll get done. You can do that. In fact, a lot of that gets done that way. And we've had, I think, a few people that might have said go to the barn. I'm just trying to remember. When I did it, it was before we had that situation. But that all came about because of those horses that died on the end of the road. Okay, I want to comment a couple things. There are many options for temporary storage, uh, for windows and anything you would have to preserve that are not cost prohibitive. And it's in my experience with what you're talking about is if we start the foundations of the house and build the foundations of the storage garage at the same time, no one is going to complain if you push the garage along a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have a, a significant investment already yeah. every one of them has been a problem is when nothing is done yeah. they say i'm yeah. going to do it and as soon as they get the outbuilding up they stop in true confessions i was part of the zba and something got by us many years ago where we have a garage up in Grand, uh, grove and road that was in the wrong place yeah and it's sitting there and we were threatened with legal fees etc cetera, etc cetera. so i don't want to see anybody build anything and then some say it's my God, get it right up and keep it in front of the town. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and what we proposed to the gentleman that was seeking the BZA is for his stated purpose of, you know, wanting maintenance equipment to Walmart. Get a trailer. Yeah, get a trailer. 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 Um, that takes us through section B, the PUD, discuss the PUD. We discussed the PUD and some other things. Um, and then the uh, modified agenda where I asked to add C, which is update the ordinance. I've had discussions with um, uh, Danielle and Bob and some members of the BZA. Uh, just as we go through and we try to read the ordinance so we understand, okay, you know, what does it mean? And, what, what is a variance or you know, do we want to allow one? I have been increasingly frustrated with our ordinances. And I think what has happened, and I, and I just, you know, I pulled um, the ordinance uh, 54506, which is the schedule of uh, regulations, just so I could take a look at the zoning of the different ones. And, and this is one of the classic ones because I've used it several times. They're all, gone. They're all gone. Well, I think the all the references to letters are actually numbers now. So if you say A is one and B is two, and, but we've got and we've got references to uh, uh, numbered sections that no longer exists because the renumberings happen. So I think that I don't even know how that happened because when we codify it, they go through and check all that stuff. They're supposed to. Supposed to. I'm, you know, evidence is supposed to. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've done enough with these now over the years that they're, they're messed. The links are broken. Yeah. And, and so I, I think there's a two step process. The, the first step, I think, is just getting the references back right. to being correct. And that's more of just a functional you know, like this one, A actually is one. So change the table and, you know, make it reference the right thing. And if we've got a section where there's a reference to section 5509, well, that's the discussion. That's <laughs> part of the discussion here. A, it involves money, right? You got to spend money, but there's got to be, I don't know if, it, if there's companies out there that do that. Um, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah. but, um, I mean, I'm just saying. That's 
point. <laughs> 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 I mean, I would say we're going to go through the number and it's an opportunity to go through all the board things because we might not want to reference something anymore. Yes. So we can fix all the numbers and then say, well, actually. Well, it, it, I would say, you know, the, the bigger picture here is I think that anyone on this commission or the BZA or even the public or the uh, employees in the office ought to be able to read our ordinance and understand what it means. And there are many that I just have to read over and it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, they're, they're, I don't think written clearly in an understandable way. And I, um, I think it, it hurts this township when you have ambiguity of what the intent is. But, you know, the st I remember the, the auxiliary building, you know, the clerks didn't even know how to uh, calculate, calculate it. it. I mean, it was like doing a differential equation. Yeah, you know? oh, Rubik's cube. Yeah, you know, and it's like, you know, that, that doesn't serve anybody when the staff doesn't know how to implement it and the public doesn't Agreed. know what's required. So I, I think there's a lot of cleanup work um, beyond are, just the numbering. Are, are there... Okay, well, let's take this in some kind of a manageable piece. Thing. Right, right. That chart's probably the worst example that needs to be fixed, right? <laughs> Can you look at that and give us an idea of what it would take to try and fix that? And, a couple, and if there's a couple of other ones that we know of. That was actually on our list. Yeah, we're going to go to Okay, why, why don't you, why don't we do that? Um, when, when you can get a handle on what you think it is, Give me an idea, then give me that, and I'll put it on the township board. That's what you're really looking for, because we got to approve money for that. Just the schedule right now? Or? Well, well, the schedule, if there's a couple of other places that you know are glaringly bad. But uh, I don't I, know yeah. if we could do the whole thing. Let's take the worst of it and try and get it started. Well, the worst of the most used? Well, I mean, we so can. I write, but... a, uh, I write these a lot, and I'll just be frank since we have two of the Board. If you want to redo the whole thing, I come here every month, we talk about it, I fix it. It's usually, you know, I'm just estimating like 20000 That's pretty cheap. I think that would be worth my sanity. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm not, just because I've been so frustrated, Bob, with trying to read no, these I and agree. understand them, that fixing done. a couple I'm of things, well, I'd rather, I'd rather just do it and get it done. Not, Take the worst offenders and okay. do that, that piecemeal. And if it's, it's, you think it might be in the twenty grand range. I mean, I have group. to look through, and and it's. I mean, we can write a scope for you. Yeah. It's that, that's that, what I need. I need a yeah, scope. Yeah, yeah. I got a. Uh, this has happened sometimes on legal bills, you know. I think this is probably ten grand. About. Okay, what do we do? What did it be? Fifty grand. Well, <laughs> yeah. well I, like yeah, a sewer I, project. Yeah, it's like a sewer project. <laughs> I, I I would tell you that if if we had, and I'm just throwing out numbers now, we had an estimate of $20,000 and we got through $20,000 and only 80% of the things were done, we I'd be okay. Be you know, I'd say we got 80% done. That's, you know, it's a huge improvement, but we probably could do the rest anyway then. Yeah. So if you give me that with the other estimate that we need to take to the board, I'll try and get them done on uh, August 8th, okay? Then, yeah, I would like to do that. I just. My estimate's going to be based on what I think. Look I know. At it. I understand. Based, but you guys might look at it and say, well, actually, I want to redo this whole thing. Like, no. Well, let's, not, let's, no. let's start with what you think. <laughs> I, yeah, you, you go with what you think. You've been around other well, regulations. Some improvement would be better than none. Exactly. I, yeah. Yeah. I want to fix the building. I don't need a new building. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. I think it's a good idea. And I, I'm more than willing to bring this to the board. If we Scoop the scope idea and uh, Daniel put it on the agenda. So, when is their meeting? And what Second the meeting? Monday of August, whatever that is. Are we doing? Oh, here's. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm doing it. Okay. It's only the scope, it's not the project. <laughs> <laughs> She's not laughing as hard. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to 
there anything else on the agenda? I don't, there's nothing else on the agenda. Public I don't, comments? Well, yeah, we, we have Darby. public comments. I don't think anyone's- Public yeah. comments? The dog is waiting. <laughs> and I know what it's it gonna be like. Ticked. He can hold it. Right? <laughs> I don't. I don't believe we have anybody online on the Zoom call. Is that correct? No. Okay, no one's on. Um, so no public comments. And then we have the uh, administrative or the consultant report that uh, was included in our package. Um, <clears throat> the monthly planning report. Oh, so, okay, so this goes pretty quick. The, the first one, and I haven't kept up on this, this um, there may have been some movement here, but there was um, the bills passed in the Senate with regard to kind of expanding Kelton supply for the workforce and um, trying to get it to a cost that they can afford. So these were six bills. And that's that getting a lot of pushback in some areas, I heard. So this is what they're currently working on. Um, secondly, you know, more questions are coming in about how to spend this money um, through, through the relief fund. Because you um, can't do anything but buy a consultant or put Wi-Fi in with it, that's why. Yeah, so more and more questions are being submitted and they, you know, every week or two they'll, they'll give us a few more updates. On it's the infrastructure is. funding with no infrastructure. No and sewers, no water, no nothing. And then the last one, which is probably the most relevant in Groveland, is some of this mining, um, the Senate bill that I think we referred to earlier. 431. Yeah, 432. 432, but there might be another one um, that's trying to preempt local zoning regulation so that Eagle would be in charge of, of mining. Yeah. I just need to say, you needed to listen to the last time that I testified when they were asking the Eagle people, well, would you go ahead and then endorse this project if we made the changes you guys suggest? No, my answer is we think you need to make those changes, but we need to support her tonight. They did everything they could to basically politely say, oh, we don't have anybody to do this. We don't want to do it, and we want nothing to do with it. And they tried to pin them down. The, the senators wanted them to force them to say, well, if we make some changes, you suggest that you'll approve this, right? No, we're not approving or We're just telling you these are the things you need to do. And they have nobody to do this. They wanted a half a million dollars to cover salary for the inspectors to get started on the program since there'll be no money coming in day one. And then said, I don't want to talk about any of that. And it was so we're in Disneyland, I think. That's what they're testifying on. It was a joke, really, very frustrating. That is frustrating. So I have a question. We <clears throat> can run these meetings till it's been included on Zoom. Obviously, with like all the board members here, but does like Michelle? Does she have to be in person here? Well, we have said that. She could call anybody. Could call in. I would prefer to have in-person meetings because I don't want people saying we're trying not to give them the opportunity to come in. But if you want to use it, you can use the Zoom. But it's only until the end of the year. Anyway. Right, right. After that, it goes away. I'm just saying, could possibly utilize to get the same year. It's all three hours of travel time. On some days, are necessary, especially come winter. Well, we're. We've been trying to go back to in-person meetings, I think. And that's generally what I prefer to do. And by the end of the year, I think it's going to be obsolete anyway. We'll put them on Facebook and YouTube. They will be on Zoom. The law that allows that goes away. It's either December 31st or January 15th. I'm sorry, Michelle. All right. I thought I tried. <laughs> And no, you can't be home doing this. <laughs> All right. Can I make a motion? You can make a motion. I make a motion. We adjourn this place. Second. Thank All you, sir. Favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? Meeting adjourned.